Welcome back to another episode of Scoundrels, Inc. This week we're covering The Force Awakens as we continue our journey in the Skywalker saga. We've done the original trilogy, we've done the prequel trilogy, and now we're into everyone's favorite trilogy, the, pr- the, the sequel Song trilogy. Oh. oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah, I mean... The Thrawn, sure, the Thrawn sure. trilogy. I'm sure people people do love that one, yes. But uh, if this is your first time okay, here on, on the channel, uh, subscribe... <laughs> Like, uh, follow us on all the socials, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. You can also, fans. we're not there yet. We didn't get approved we haven't, yet. We're yeah. still waiting on the approval process. It takes a long time. Guys, we also have a podcast a feed. Check us out on all your favorite podcast things. If you are listening on a podcast feed, give us a review. Give us a little. Yeah, we can do some reviews. There's a couple in you know. there, and I think one of them's from Kevin. So <laughs> that doesn't count. That doesn't <laughs> it doesn't count. really count. And then, actually, you could probably find the one that is from Kevin. Uh, if you do, down downvote that review. Screenshot you, it and then oh. like, s- don't downvote it. What, what do you? This our. Sh- no, downvote just the review, not the show. Well, okay. Well, I don't know if you can do that, but if you can, can you? I don't know. I don't know. I want people to see. Don't it. all. But screenshot it and then send it and then tweet it to Kevin. Kevin's not here yeah. this week. So he could really use the boost. Somehow Kevin Smets has vanished. <laughs> or or you could put it in the Discord. Or in our Discord, too. That'd be funny. I yeah. combined it the somehow Palpatine you what? has returned. You combined, combined it? I combined it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> like a good... Yeah, like, like a the good, Force. The, for, well, like the a Force combines us together. It surrounds, it surrounds us. us. It, com- it combines Guys, us. Guys, this is a, this is going to be a weird week. I it already know it. Penetrates us. So I mean, I don't I don't know why it'd be a weird week. Stra- I don't know. Brandon and I I feel like we're all in weird moods. Looking across the I'm not in a weird. I think look so. It. I think okay, I'm in look, a weird look mood. It. Frankie, when 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 I'm setting up, uh, you know, I'm like I, I know, like to be in laser, my zone. But and usually you loosen up like right before we start. I I feel pretty loose. Let me see. Yeah, okay. I, I'm wrong. You know? Well, then Brandon and I are going to be in a weird mood today. <laughs> 60 portions. There we go. How's that? That's pretty good. <laughs> I'll pay for it. That should be your attitude towards our OnlyFans, by the way. All right. 60 so, portions. So here's... I'll but, pay for before it. We, before we get into the movie, I want to know, what were your guys' reaction to the Disney purchasing of Star Wars? Right, because that's kind of important for, yeah. to, to understand. That's true. That, no, it's a good point. Right? I'm an optimist, so I was pretty hyped. You know, I was like, we're getting more Star Wars. I never cool. thought I never thought that would happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think at the time we had the Marvel stuff like Disney had just kind of acquired Marvel. So there was mm-hmm. some positivity around it. Yeah. The, it, recent. The, yeah. the MCU had just been starting to build for a few years at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think I was kind of surprised because I never thought George would sell. Star Wars. I mean, he sold Lucasfilm, but yes, it has Star Wars. Sure, and I'd sell my own kid for four billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, I'd sell a but lot I mean, of things like, for four bill. <laughs> in hindsight, you know, look, when, guys, when anyone each, out there who wants to offer me four bill? In, in hindsight, when each movie is going to make like a billion dollars, if you do it right, which you know they all pretty much did all except did, for right? Solo. Yeah, um, when that's a whole nother topic for another time. But you know, these movies are going to do crazy amounts of money. Uh, four billion though, still a lot of money. I was curious, th- uh, or um, I guess I was curious why he chose Disney. I mean, I know he had done some like work with the parks and stuff like that. On yeah. the so I knew there was kind of that, and, and Kathleen Kennedy. And well, he had a good relationship with Bob Iger, right? I don't, I don't, pers- I don't know, I don't, specifically. I, I don't know, but to... I know he had. I mean, he had. You know, you had Indiana Jones and Star Wars already in the Disney parks. Um, they've done yeah. Star Wars stuff. That's why right. they had Star Tours already. I'm trying to remember. Right. There is definitely like a story. There's like a reason him and Bob Iger had a good relationship, and that's why he like even entertained the idea. Hmm. And then of course, like he wanted Kathleen Kennedy to be the head of it because of his time working with her as a producer right. and how great she is. So yeah, yeah. So, but it was interesting though that you know, like once again, Disney get in this huge IP. Well, also, I think Disney has the money, right? I don't know that anyone else had the money. I'm sure Universal would have ponied up for Star I mean, Wars. They probably a, a Universal could. Star Wars. I don't know if I can yeah, pick I don't know. I, that's I, yeah, the thing, right? Like, but like, could you also could, wait, could you have pictured Disney Star Wars? Like, I like 20th yeah. Century Fox. Like that whole thing just was a packaged thing that's so iconic together. Like we will we'll talk about the opening of the Force Awakens, where it doesn't have the 20th Century Fox fanfare, <laughs> which is really kind of a major adjustment as a as a but fan. Disney but 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 so I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm sure any some other studio would have because i don't try i don't know that i mean yeah i think there's a, my i think my, the better question is who had the money 
and would be a good steward for the brand. I think right? it's more the latter what you're Lord talking Denethor, about. The the well, but I think it's com- I think it's a combination. Right? Well, sure, because, but I mean, I think because I can't see a Warner Brothers Star Wars. You know, I mean, it's kind of hard to see it now. Now that it's so ingrained with Disney, I guess. Hashtag At least restore myself. the Snyder Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> like, imagine would you want yeah. would you want the Snyder verse? <laughs> good lord! Oh man! I mean, we, uh, never mind. Um, because I mean, if you look, Save if you look at what room. Marvel was putting, if you look Marvel at what Disney was putting out and what brands Disney was embracing at the time versus what the other major studios, what they were doing at the time, right? Like, you know, if you're comparing the the three big ones are Universal, Disney, and and um, Warner Brothers. Yeah. What was Universal doing? Fucking jack shit. Oh, they were trying to. I think was, were they, they were to do just the monster verse. It was. I think it's a little bit. Up. I the think the monster verse started later. At least it was been publicly. Cool, yeah, yeah, out yeah. later yeah, than that. Yeah. But they had Dracula Untold, which was technically the start of the MonsterVerse. People forget that. Well, they tried right. and then they kind of backtracked. Well, they had Dracula Untold and I Frankenstein, right? And both those are technically no. I Frankenstein's like its own weird thing. Okay, it's like based off of that's a based off a comic graphic I know. Or novel or comic yeah. book. Yeah, but um, and then you had what uh, Man of Steel. Yeah, that's which also is in the monster. A weird, yeah. D- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Warner Brothers had Man of Steel, which is a weird dour. Like people like it, but it's a, a monster. It is a weird dour Superman, right? And like I don't know that if George is looking at the big blockbusters that come in. Are yeah, coming I'm sure. Like time, you know, right? he had meetings of like what. Would, I mean, like oh. also, it's interesting that you know, obviously George had his ideas for the sequels, and none of them were and. Obviously, Disney did not use them, but I guess so that many. also goes <laughs> yeah. to show you that probably any other studio would not have taken I mean, them it, either, it, it I does, guess. From what I've seen or what I've heard, like Disney did take some of like the nuts and bolts of yeah. what George wanted to do. Aside from like one time, I don't know how true it is, like him wanting to like focus on like the force on like a microscopic level mm-hmm. at one point. Sure, but George had know. weird... Here's the thing with George, right? That'd be like, like Osmosis Jones trilogy. Of <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> or oh, honey, I, honey, I shrunk the Jedi. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're hanging out with midichlorians. <laughs> it's like a whole midichlorian cantina. Yeah, what's that music like? Uh, <laughs> now is that in the jizz genre? <laughs> no, it's in the glorp genre. The gl- uh, oh boy, yeah, they're they're glorp guzzlers. Yeah, they don't they don't wail. <laughs> No, they're glorp guzzlers. I don't, guzzle. I don't even want to. I don't. Uh, so, hey, so this. So, they, so Disney bought Star Wars. <laughs> what? Lucasfilm. Yeah. I but was. Yeah, I will say. I will say. I was. I was like you, Brandon. I'm like, oh shoot, we're gonna get more Star Wars. I never thought. You know, we talked about the last week with Revenge of the Sith. That was it. That was that was going to be it. Um, and so with Disney's acquisition, it was like, oh, we're gonna get more Star Wars. Oh, they're. They're definitely going to do movies because they bought it for four billion dollars. Mm-hmm. They're definitely going to be pumping out a lot of Star Wars content mm-hmm. to make their money back. Well, and I thought they, that was really exciting, as because like the, I guess the the property had been somewhat dormant if we you know exclude books and whatnot and sure. some animated series and comics. But then they but then they ended Legends. Sure, they which I, I like, personally okay, was I, not upset about. Yeah, I'm not I I, I'm not upset about that either. Legends had some fucking silliness in there. There's a lot of Legends I love, but mm-hmm. as a yeah. whole, I think. As a whole, I think it's net negative, not net, net positive. And now we could talk about if whether or not it's been a, a stu- not that's a not whole, today. That's, that's a whole other, other, yeah, other, thing. other thing. But and one thing I want to bring up here that I think we'll talk about when we get to Last Jedi, because or um, uh, Rise of Skywalker, because I think for me this really comes to a head with Rise of Skywalker. Is Disney said, well, everything now is going to be embraced by canon, right? The sure. books, the movies, the comics. We got the Marvel comics, which are great. You know, we've had some really good video games. We've had a couple bad video games. Um, you know, it's it's this is the new era of Disney. And I think this movie very much spells the beginning of that in a way that like it's setting the tone for the property moving forward in I, in what I think is a pretty positive way. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll come back to the crawl. But I mean, o- overall, I think this movie is. A net positive. I think it is a great homage to elements of the the original trilogy, and in some ways, the prequel trilogy. You know that that yeah, a lot of people say it's hey, this is just a rehash of a New Hope or a rehash of the original trilogy. Well, yeah, it is, but in in a in an homage and not a remake. You know, remake. Yeah, it's yeah. not a reboot. It's not a remake. It's an homage. It's showing hey, the Star Wars you love is the Star Wars we love. 
because especially coming off a lot of negativity from the prequels, I mean, which is interesting conversation to have because because the prequels are so so we're at the since time. that yeah, but at that time you're right, but since then it's kind of weird because and this is more of a prequel overall a sequel conversation that or uh, it's centered around the sequel trilogy, whereas as the discourse around the sequel trilogy got a little bit more sour. The, the prequel pre- trilogy was more embraced, which is just kind of a one a one eighty on I think the fandom overall. Uh, so it's a you could look at it through that lens. Well, of, I think it has to do with the way internet culture talks about things sure, now, right? Totally, totally. Because internet culture almost has this whole idea that anything new is bad and everything old is good. Which right, is why and, everyone and, thinks yeah. our podcast is really bad. <laughs> right, it's super because new. we're brand new. But once another Star Wars podcast yeah. out there starts, we'll be the we'll be the good guys. Yeah, once, once, <laughs> we, once, right. once we once we once, once we start another podcast, yeah. people will look back at this one very. Like, hey, this remember, is, <laughs> it'll might take twenty years, but by, yeah. by God, we'll get there. We'll get there. But I mean, I mean, like it's it's this whole idea that like oh, they're ruining X property, right? Yeah. But yeah. I mean, really, they're just doing the same, and I mean this in a positive. They're doing the same thing again. They're paying homage to what's old while still embracing new techniques and new characters and yeah. new storytelling methods. I definitely want to get into all that with this movie, but before we even do that, I think the hype, break. <laughs> the hype around this movie, specifically when the trailers came out, the teasers and all that, and then um, you had uh, Comic-Con and all that, but the the trailer, I, I, it was, or the teaser even like the very first teaser i remember i was like watching that i was like getting my cars like emissions checked i remember oh, really <laughs> and i remember watching it and i was just like there's been an awakening have you felt it i'm like who the hell is that guy yeah this what's his deal it was we really, still don't know it, the, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah let me know when you find out <laughs> um he's kino loy clearly <laughs> right yeah was, i think he, he said there's one way out of this emissions dealership Thing, Never more than twelve. <laughs> Never more than twelve cars that have bad emissions that need to then be recalled and fixed and the, uh, <laughs> something something. Yeah, I mean the hype. The Chew- Chewy were yeah, home, right? Yeah. Like, yes. like Chewy were home. I think was what we. I think I watched that one in a stairwell at college. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Chewy were home, and then and then Finn's heavy breathing. I think are the two things I remember. Um, oh, and he pops up into the screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that sent the internet ablaze as well for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, sure. Yeah. It's a cool shot. It's a, cool, a great shot. Um, you know, and the and the and the fake out of of Finn igniting a lightsaber. A hundred. I actually just watched the trailer too mm-hmm. for the, for the first time in well, like forever. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the this trailer like signals an era of movie trailers being different, like. Like movie tra- trailers having a different emotional edge, and maybe not this trailer, but this was trailer was around the time where movie trailers started being more than just like, you know, hey, here's the movie, right? It was it's like the trailer itself is telling a story, or trying to trying to evoke like this this rather huge emotional nostalgia note that I feel like before, you know, yeah, trailers were still trying to evoke an emotion or tell a story or give you what the movie was. I feel like. These trailers came at a time when, I mean, every one of these trailers had to be emotional for you guys, right? Like for the most part, I mean, the Chewie know. were home obviously is just um, a seminal <laughs> moment yeah. in I think a lot of people's Star Wars fandom because of how long it had been for a Star Wars movie, and it's Harrison Ford mm-hmm. and Chewbacca and Millennium Falcon, and you're just like, whoa, we're really this yeah. is actually really happening. Um, it was very exciting, but also just kind of like. What is what, like? What are they? What story are they going to tell? Because when you watch the trailer, you know um, there ain't no Luke Skywalker, right? There's no Luke vanished, Skywalker, Frank. no R two, not vanished. a lot of no there's, Leia, there's not, really. Not a lot of Leia. Yeah. There's a little bit of Leia. She yeah. didn't vanish. She sure up. We've show. got this new fucking the first time you see Kylo Ren and you don't You're know like, who he is. Oh, Darth Vader mm-hmm. fanboys. Remember what I think? Right. When I thought you know. Right. But I, I I thought he looked so badass. Oh no, he totally like looks that bad. first Still, shot of him yeah. in the snow. And I remember all the jokes about the Swiss Army lightsaber. Oh yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, I remember seeing that. So I mean, it's there was so much, and I think that that's, I think that's the 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 weird thing about this whole negative internet um, surge is that like it spawns these memes that I do think are positive for. 
the film as a whole, right? Like, because you see that, like, I, I see that and the kid in me goes like, oh, what the hell's up with that lightsaber, Yeah, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Totally. And I remember the speculation of, oh, well, it's this or it's that, or who's this character, right? Where is he from? I thought, you know, Luke destroyed the Sith, so who's this? You know, all this stuff. And then you see this lightsaber and then you go on, on the internet and two hours later, someone's photoshops it to be a Swiss army knife. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, but I do think that's, that's positive. I do think when we can have fun and, and joke about these movies, you know, it's like the, like the Finns heavy breathing or the, you know, BB eight being a stupid soccer ball, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, I mean, that's it's, it's all, voice. I think it's all good for the, good for the, the sure. genre as a whole, the, the, the series as a whole. Yeah, it's fun to interact with that way when you keep it lighthearted and you're not so gatekeepy um, about those types of things. Then, yeah, it can definitely be a fun way to interact with the fandom at large. Um, I never joke about Star Wars. <laughs> no, <laughs> never, never. Not once. Dead serious. Dead serious. Um, I do want also want to bring up this one point because you know when we talk about when we've been talking about these movies, we talk about where we, where we were at in our lives or you know stories that surround the movies. And I got to say, this movie specifically. Or this time period of which this movie was coming out, you know, talked about, theorized, and thereafter, uh, started my relationship with the Schmodown slash Collider yeah, community. Yeah, I was going to say, What's yeah. That? Um, <laughs> well, okay, yeah, so I mean, back, actually, let me tell you this a story, is, Brandon. So this is what I was going to say, was none of, when this movie came out, we still didn't know each other. Absolutely. None of us, yeah. No. Yeah, and, and I... So for I was in my Schmodown, senior year of college. For Schmodown fans, really Collider weird fans, to think about. Um, you'll probably appreciate this little story, or these little stories, or you know, flashbacks to to that time because that was when the Schmoes No podcast show was moving over to Collider. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember seeing on my YouTube algorithm, I recommend um, Collider Jedi Council, right? Same. Starting to talk about Star show. Wars and stuff like that, and here's and I was such. Um, I was I was a person that did not want to engage with online discussion because I thought a lot of it, and there still is a lot of it, was just leaks or right. um, you know different types of speculation. I wanted to go into this movie specifically after so long, not listening to any discourse or any conversations or theories. I wanted to go in yeah. as fresh as possible. But leading up to this movie, it's so funny that Week after week, for probably like a month at least, I saw a, a Collider Jedi Council thumbnail on my recommends and I never clicked on it because they were talking about The Force Awakens or the casting or what have you. And for like, I said, I said, after I see the movie, I will click on that, I will click on one of their videos. And that's actually how I got introduced <laughs> to Christian and Mark and everybody at Collider. Uh, John Camp, yeah, I was a John fan Schnapp before then. Yeah, not so, to be so I will say, you know, I, I will say, it was the, for me, it was the Disney buyout that. Oh, really? Had me find them. I mean, I had like pretty around that time. I'd already started watching Star Wars Explained. Um, I Heard of that think guy. Um, like Mr. Sunday Movie stuff like that. Oh, um, but it was really like and I, a few others that I don't think I can even fucking remember or or put a timeline to. Um, but like, I think, yeah, it was around that that I really started watching Collider, um, you know, to. Like I was so excited, I wanted to see other people be excited about. Yeah, it. you know. So, um, you know, and Ken Napsok, right? You know, he eventually started doing his own stuff. You know, followed him, fucking all over. And Seven Eleven. Now he won't even talk store. to you. Now he won't. Now he doesn't like me. No, <laughs> but, you know, in all serious, <laughs> yeah. Right. Like I think. Follow I yeah, think yeah, for me, can. for me, the excitement around these movies, and at the same time, the MCU, um, for me. Like, this was uh, really entering a golden age of I'll this be honest, type of coverage. I'll be, this isn't Star Wars related, but I haven't seen an MC. I haven't seen any of the MC, MCU movies since um, Doctor Strange. Which, Which one? one? <laughs> the, the 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 one this year, Multiverse I'm, of Madness. Yeah, okay, so, so I, you went I, through I, the original. So I haven't all seen. Through Endgame I haven't seen the new Thor. I haven't seen the new Black Panther. Okay. I haven't seen She Hulk or because after Doctor Strange, you were like. It can't possibly. Get I was like, it. can't possibly what? get better than this. You know what? They blew up Black Bolt's head. That's all I need. Right? Spoiler no, I just, alert. I just, you know what? There is, there is a. For me, it is a, it is a bit of superhero fatigue. Right? I didn't see the Batman, and I didn't see any of the other mm-hmm. superhero movies see this Batman. year. I Batman. plan on it. It's on my list. We'll get there. It's, it's a good time. Uh, but yeah, was, I watched I think... Bullet Train instead. Brandon, <laughs> who, who would be vengeance in the Star Wars universe? Darth Maul. 
You think Darth Maul shows up and people go, who are you? And he goes, I'm vengeance. Yeah, that's exactly what he fucking does. <laughs> yeah, but he would be like, I'm revengeance. <laughs> no, because I, I think he talks too much. Be like, I'm vengeance. Uh, yeah. And well, also, he, he goes, he goes, I'm vengeance. Let me wax philosophically yeah, about the yeah, Jedi yeah. and the Sith and how they're both wrong. If I told you about how I used to be Palpatine's apprentice, yeah, sure, Maul. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the emperor used to be the emperor's apprentice. That Whoa. used to be me. <laughs> But uh, something that actually dawns on me as as we're talking about this is if it wasn't for Star Wars being bought by Disney coming back, mm-hmm. I, I'm definitely not sitting here today. I'm definitely not in you're LA. back in You're back in Chicago. I'm still in Chicago working a dead-end job probably, living for the weekends, getting drunk as hell, and you know rinse, repeat, and then I die when I'm 52 in some... On an at an L stop during the middle of the winter. Uh, <laughs> I have heard that everybody is working for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, actually, they made a song about it. Did they? He did. Yeah, they did. Wow. Um, but what? 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 So it's interesting how and part of why we do this podcast or why I like to do the podcast is because Star Wars has had such uh, a big impact on my life in ways that I don't fully recognize sometimes. Like even right now, I'm discovering like whoa. Force Awakens is the reason why I ended up getting involved with Schmodown, getting involved with the community. The reason why I ended up ended up working on the show for a handful of years and meeting some incredible people, and now why I'm sitting here today. And yeah, and sadly (laughs) these scoundrels, right? Like who are these people? Well, I mean, and and like to the same to the same token. I mean, you know, I got involved involved in the Schmodown a little bit after you. uh, I think around. You you were involved in the show, involved in the show before me, but like I was around by that time and. Yeah, and you know, I remember I took your picture with you. Andrew did Guy. yeah? There's a there's a really there's a good <laughs> picture that you know on our first mine and Jill's first event um, with Schmodown. Um, I took that photo. I said, <laughs> never seen this guy again. Yeah, well, because well, because I had I had um I had went. I mean, this is totally unrelated, but like I had gone and and met everyone at the um at WonderCon. I think two years before, you know, mm-hmm. and then. That was kind of like my oh these are normal people gotcha. these are like real people some of us well you weren't involved in that. <laughs> um, no but, one's no one's but normal I mean, in the space and I mean that in a good way but now like the you know now every, you know every night I go home I play video games for for like two hours and I'm hanging out with people I met through the Shmodown yeah you know and and like I've made friendships that like I wouldn't fucking trade for anything because of the Shmodown which I would have only gotten involved in because of Star Wars I mean I was the I was a Star Wars guy in the Shmodown. You know, like it's so weird. This my whole life is changed by this fucking movie came out coming out. Yeah. And like regardless of the quality of the movie, it's the communities and the discussions that built up around it. And I think had Disney not come back and in a way revived Star Wars, not that Star Wars was dead or dying. I mean, but it's more a matter of like if George never sold the property. You know, it just it would eventually have just fucking faded to a cult classic movie series that, you know, that was it. You know, there'd still be Star Wars Legends content. There'd still be, I'm sure there'd still be a bevy of books and and the occasional video games, but that's all just licensing, right? Like this is Lucasfilm actually fucking pushing forward and becoming something else. And now we've got Willow and Indiana Jones and we're going to get a Strange Magic sequel. I just oh, know it. I hope so. You know, Red <laughs> Tails 2. I can't wait. <laughs> Strange Magic. All right, let's actually talk Strange about the movie. Strange Magic. Red yeah, Tales so, yeah we can also. get into the movie now. Um, so so the movie opens no fanfare. How do you feel? It was a really weird uh, theater experience because I was very conscious that there wasn't going to be any. And I was very your, curious about. Your heart still wants it. I back then, more. back then I did. Back I, then I did. I still do. But and I know I right shouldn't. now I'm, I'm. Here's the interesting though. I'm not the here's, pad here's, caster. I should be. Here's the interesting <laughs> thing though. After watching the, the the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy, you know, as we're doing this series here on the on the channel, and listening to the Fox fanfare for six movies straight, and then last night I watched The Force Awakens and there was none of that. It was really weird. Yeah. It was really weird, and. It's not something that I need back. I think I like that when I go back and watch the other two trilogies and it has that, it it really puts those movies into a time capsule of my life. Of And, and it really, it just bookends, it's just a, a period of time, which is a long period of time, um, 
of when Star Wars was this. And now Star Wars is this with Disney. And I know a lot of people have their opinions about that. But for me, um, it just it's just a way to for me to recognize where we were and where we are now and going. Can I can I be honest? I think for better or worse, Star Wars is bigger now than it ever was before Disney. Because probably because yeah. you know if Star Wars has taken definitely its, I think yeah Star Wars has taken its first steps into a larger world because now Star it's Wars? I mean it's not indie anymore Star you know Wars. right it's not it's not a small indie movie it's yeah. not a cult classic that fucking nerds like it's not a it's not a movie that I, like me in high school trying to be you know cool and like all that stuff like uh, well also I mean this goes hand in hand I guess a little bit with the MCU in sure, terms of yeah. bringing nerd culture to the forefront as opposed to being bullied for it but I do but I do think Star Wars wouldn't have taken Star Wars would have would have been total along with it whereas I feel like now Star Wars has taken oh, okay. is taking leading leading steps with stuff like the Mandalorian yeah. with you know with stuff like Rogue One and and, and all these great fucking series like and or like and games too frankly. and the and well i mean but we've always had great games but i i think i do think like um uh fallen order is a step forward for star wars gaming yeah right it is a it is a triple a first party like you know banger of a game about star wars you know and, and yeah knights of the old republic is great and the old Battlefront games are great, and like Tie Fighter vs X Wing and the Rogue Squadron Star series, Wars Galaxies. Where's my Star Wars Galaxies fan at? I don't. Star Wars don't Galaxies think, band was Frank, my. Frank, I don't. Frank, I don't jam. think they're out there. They I, are. I think it's you and Mark Fernandez. I think that's it. No, they're out there. There's servers out there. I need to download a copy and get on those. Oh, those if you do, if you do, servers. I'm down. I I gotta get a computer to do it. And, okay, and if you do, I I I I check someone's. There's a there's a channel out there. Um, that goes through the whole process of like how you would install it and get can onto these send, servers. Can you and stuff. send me that? I'll see if I can or find someone those. Or yeah. someone, one of you people in the Discord, yeah. send me that. Because yeah. that sounds oh. cool. I'll stream that on Twitch. I love Galaxy. We can do that together on Twitch. That'd be fun. Um, yeah. I, what they're okay. talking about. All right, let's Nerd. talk. But we do need to talk about Force Awakens. <laughs> we are talking about Force Awakens. I know. Awakens. Well, we we're kind of talking about the. Because the it has awakened my fandom once you, again. <laughs> that's a great. Okay, that is a great comment. And I do, I do think that's true. I also remember where I was when I read the title for the first time. Oh, interesting. Also at college, but in the cafeteria. And where did you go to college? I went to a lovely, very prestigious school called Central Connecticut State University, okay. home Catonic. of the Blue Devils. <laughs> and how was that time in your life for you? It was, it was mixed. It was, it was mixed. <laughs> I don't think you've ever laughed like that on this show before. <laughs> it's on record now. I'm over here going. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> oh, gosh. I mean, like Tauntaun Chewbacca noises. Chewbacca fucking laugh. <laughs> I will say, though, I think um, seeing the title for the first time as the Star Wars logo separates at the end of the trailer and mm-hmm. there it's comes cool. in. It's a very, it was a very cool reveal of what the title of that movie was going to be, and I was like, "Man, this is bitching, dude." I remember thinking, "Weird title." Do you really? Yeah, I remember. I thought it made perfect sense. I, I remember like, being that disappointed mean? that they didn't go back again and do Star Wars Negative Three. You know, well, because you know we did four, five, six, and then one, two, three. Uh, I so see. I thought they were going to go back three more. Negative in it. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Negative. Yeah, you didn't really think that. You thought five, it'd be four, a funny three. joke to say, and it just kind of fell flat. Yeah. Is that it? I got another funny joke <laughs> for. I got another funny joke coming up for the oh, for God. the for the Bad Batch episode. Oh, I can't no. wait. Oh boy! For okay. those for those watching at home, I know you're watching this after you watch our Bad Batch review, but we actually filmed this before we talk about Bad Batch. I got a great one for the Bad Batch. A little behind the scenes insight there for you, for all for all you people at home. Yeah. So let's. Talk, you want to talk about? We should talk about the we movie. We should talk Sean. about the movie. All right. <laughs> so so we we open up. There's a I there's like a it. star. That's Star Wars. Yeah. I forget how this Honestly, is Honestly, crawl. One of the best yeah, opening that's crawl. Great. <laughs> it opens with a crawl. One Sean. of the best opening crawls. One Definitely. of the most one Definitely. of the most head scratching. It's the first I time do. I've looked at an opening crawl and went. I have critiques. Let me pull huh? it up okay. actually. I'm gonna pull up the, the crawl? opening crawl right now. So Luke Skywalker has vanished. Yeah. Good hook. Whoa. Good hook. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh uh his his sister, Princess Leia, has dispatched Ace Pilot Poe Dameron. I can fly everything, Poe Dameron. Hell yeah, you can. To go find his location, find the map to Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, Kylo was Ren, a myth. <laughs> Kylo Ren and his 
first order. I honestly, I really do enjoy the comedy of it where he's like, that droid has a map that leads directly to Luke Skywalker. Oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> because that's exactly what Finn didn't want. He didn't yeah. want to get involved in this, and he's like, now I'm involved yeah. in the Dude, biggest the, thing the, in the game. The, like, come the on. The very one thing I did not want you to say. <laughs> 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 like, could have said the anything else. The worst, you know. It's not like it's not like a map to a watering hole. It's a but map to Luke Skywalker. It's super funny too how he says it so casually to Ray. He's like, "Well, apparently that joy's got a map to Luke Skywalker, and everybody wants it." <laughs> and she's like, whoa, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" The myth. The guy that I thought was a myth two seconds ago. Like I'm like, I do. I I, I appreciate that scene of, of worlds. I guess there's I something know. about that scene where where uh, Finn and Ray first get on the Falcon. Yeah, and they're like Luke Skywalker the. The, the rebellion hero or the... You no, know, that's about Han Solo. Oh, that's, that's about Han, Han. You're right. The yeah. smuggler. The war hero? Yeah. And Chewie's like, I don't know. <laughs> Which is a great... You are the Han Solo Chewie that thing. fought with the rebellion. That's right. I watched half this movie today. Right, so, so you got the, scr- you got I, the crawl right yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want me to just say the crawl? Yeah, read it in your yeah, most dramatic it. voice possible. Oh, really? Luke Skywalker has vanished. In his absence, the sinister First Order has risen from the ashes of the Empire and will not rest until Skywalker, the last Jedi, has been destroyed. With support of the Republic, General Leia Organa leads a brave resistance. She is desperate to find her brother Luke and gain his help in restoring peace and justice to the galaxy. Leia has sent her most daring pilot on a secret mission to Jakku, where an old ally has discovered a clue to Luke's whereabouts. What are your critiques on the... I have a critique. Um, okay. I think... They should have called it the New Republic, not the Republic. Agreed. It, it gets confusing for people who aren't like yeah. super ingrained in what's going on. Like the same people who are like, why is Darth Maul at the end of Solo? Is this before oh, my the dad? Phantom Menace? That's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Sean's dad. Um, it's fine. He doesn't watch this. <laughs> so yeah, call it the New Republic. So that makes sense. You know what I mean? That makes sense. And but I did- what happens when this Republic falls... And then rise. Was it going to be the new the, new republic? The new new republic. <laughs> the new new. Well, let's hope, let's hope it doesn't happen for the again. Right time, well, it's it's the know? new republic, but it's spelled N-U, like new metal. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> and I had another critique. Of something about the first order. Well, my critique is that it says with the support of the republic. It's like eh, kind of not really. I mean, because like, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, it's like the resistance it's is like, like a militia. It's that's like, like you're yeah, you're sanctioned by the republic, but they're not really supporting you. And that's this part movie of the problem. Does not. But also, um, sorry, but like um, Hux does complain that they like support the resistance when he's given his grand yeah, like, dictator yeah. speech. But it's like this isn't the Republic's army. And but the movie in the series at large does not tell you that the Republic does not even have okay, an army. Right. And Figured so you're like, well, but that's that's really getting into the weeds of the politics Another, of that's kind yeah. of absent from the yeah, trilogy we'll, at large. I think we'll have to talk about that after. Another yeah, critique. Yeah. I figured it out. Another critique. Um, just to again, I know just this is just as clarification to like the governments and everything going on, kind of politically, right? Add new republic, add the word new, and the sentence that reads here: "The sinister first order has risen from the ashes of the empire." I think it should have said something like, "After the defeat of the empire, the sinister first order rose from its ashes." Well, you know, like, that way like- it solidifies the empire freaking lost. But I feel like that. I feel like we already know the empire lost, and I feel like that set sentence. Do we? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you blew up another Death Star. They, they didn't went, lose after the first one got The blown Emperor's up. dead. Ah, you can get a new Emperor. They got a chain of command. Yeah, but I think I think rises where, where, from the ashes. Where's of the, the Secretary of State and the Vice Emperor? What's the, what are they doing? I don't know. Um, no, I I do like Masamita was actually he was um, uh, arrested on Coruscant and then taken captive by. A guy whose name I don't remember. You know, I really think this all just comes down to the fact that the Emperor had lightning fingers because lightning the fingers. government is still intact. Lightning fingers. But Masamita doesn't have any lightning fingers, so they can't stop anyone from arresting him. Well, but but we also know that there was a, a revolt on Coruscant. We see that in the end of... Yeah, but the entire planet's one big city, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I do like this this crawl as like the first crawl it. reintroducing us yeah. to, it to gives, Star Wars. It gives a lot of questions. I've nitpicked. It does. But it's a top tier crawl. Yeah, because I mean, like it sets up the whole Luke Skywalker thing. And you know, the first time I'm watching this movie, I'm like, well, he's gonna show up like halfway through probably. <laughs> um, and then it's like only Han <laughs> Solo shows up. Doesn't even shows say up. anything. And then yeah, I mean, this is a whole really. It's an interesting conversation that's gonna lead into the Last Jedi. Uh, talk. Go away. And uh, they say that in the crawl, the Last Jedi. 
And they also yeah. say it again in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The, yeah. Snoke says so it. So I'm just saying, like, Ryan Johnson didn't have to do a lot of thinking. No. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, where have I heard this before? It was like almost like JJ, like, like I don't even know, like not manipulated him, but like subtextually. So JJ gave was him the, the answer. Palpatine of the sequel. Yeah. Trilogy? Ryan Johnson, Snoke, JJ's Palpatine. Yeah, because somehow JJ returns. Somehow JJ <laughs> returns. <laughs> Chris Terrio is like the Sith Eternal. They're like there to he's there to do his bidding. Sure. You know? All right. How do you guys feel about the like? How do you guys feel about? I, I, we're not going to go see my scene. No, but I do want to talk about, about like, the opening. Yes, because the opening, because the opening is, is so good. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to start this episode with who talks first. You talk first. I talk that's first. That's next episode. <sighs> Dang you! And I, that's how I was planning to start. Maybe next, next episode. Yeah. What do you mean? Last Jedi is next. Oh episode, no, that is bro. this episode. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of the of the prank phone call with Hux. Oh, oh yeah. well, that's the, yeah. Well, well don't spoil well, it. Yeah. <laughs> but no, the beginning great, of this movie, great yo mama joke. The beginning of this movie. movie is it sets up the the characters very very well. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. the introduction that Kylo Ren, so Poe Dameron, right. Finn, Ray. I mean, I just want it all done. I still want to so know well. more. Know more about Loris Anteca. Mm-hmm. Remember when everyone thought he was gonna be Boba Fett? Oh, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> good. Oh, that's a pretty good. Everyone like Max von Sydow's playing an old Boba Fett. He's gotta be like, you no. Know, why? He was just another follower of the Force. You know? Well, he kind of looks like like the same vein. Of, like he kind of looks he like, like an he's older from New version. Zealand to you. Well, he kind of looks like an older version of a younger Jeremy Bullock, but Jeremy Bullock was also still alive at the time. So fuck <laughs> off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but look at this movie. Talking about the opening, Could the opening scene with with when Finn and Poe escape. That whole sequence, I mean, that is such a Star yeah. Wars sequence if I've ever seen one. I mean, mm-hmm. I have to give incredible uh, praise to J.J. for that sequence and the way, the pacing of it, the action, the, actually some of the comedic and you know what? Uh, moments in, in that cockpit and, and it's the more way it brutal. just... It's more brutal than a, a, a lot of what mm-hmm. we get in a, in the previous Star Wars films because the stormtroopers just fucking slaughter that village. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Right? Like, the yeah, blood yeah. on Finn's helmet. The, yeah, J.J. shot this movie like it was the year, you know, 2025. Like, it just it brought yeah. Star Wars really into modern times with the modern filmmaking techniques and whatnot. And stopping and the, the lighting. Fire using, is amazing. I, I do, I do want to say, like, we haven't had a lot of scenes lit like this yeah. when Star Wars really should have sooner because blaster bolts are bright. Right, so you've got this dark environment, sure, and you have the bla- like the blaster bolts. Uh, episode three has a few shots that kind of embrace this a little bit, but like this, this film really embraces the color and the lights of Star Wars weaponry. It really, yeah, in a way that like I don't think a lot of blues, a lot of reds in this movie. What about um, the lights flickering on like the transport when the oh, yeah. troopers are yeah. coming down? I mean, it was just I remember I that, remember shot, that the shot trailer was great. I mean, yeah. and then watching yeah. that in the theater for the first time, I'm like, holy crap, we are watching Star Wars. In a brand new way, and it is mm-hmm. absolutely awesome. Um, the, uh, the blaster bolt mm-hmm. that Poe shoots, that Kylo catches, catch, stops, catches, um, and how you just move past it mm-hmm. in the shot. I'm like, dude, we are seeing stuff we never even dreamt of seeing in Star Wars in a live action. Never saw Darth Vader do that. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. I w- could you imagine Laura Santeca saying, "Dad, Don Wee's here." <laughs> Are we still on this? <laughs> I had I had to get well, that to be out. Fair, to be fair, this will begin to make things right. It's kind of like, look, I was a dick in the other movies. <laughs> I remember people thought that was a slight at the prequels, yeah. and I'm like, I I man, do think well, people think that every movie, oh, that's a slight at the last. Yeah, <laughs> there's like it's each not. one of these movies, each each one of the sequel trilogies has one or two lines that everyone goes like, oh, that's a slight at. I'm like, well, okay. Like, yeah, I do think there's a little bit of a choice, that being the first line, right? Mm. Like, this will begin to make things <laughs> like, right. Yeah, you know what? I'm sorry. I do think that that's a little bit of like a, like, hey, let's let's put this on the right track. But I don't know that it's necessarily a slight at the sequels in, in a negative way. Because it way. is such a, it's, if anything, it is such a shot at George Lucas that it seems insane to me that J.J. would yeah. do that. Probably just a like, coincidence. I don't know. No, it's definitely it's definitely it's just like like uh like when Luke throws the lightsaber. But you think in the you last think JJ Jedi. would disrespect George like that? No, I don't think that it would be. I don't think that it would be meant in a disrespectful thing to George, more than a an homage to the fans, right? And I, I do think that there. I do think that you can have you can have both those worlds where because this movie absolutely pays respects to George in a lot of ways, um, but I do also think that. You have to remember back to 2015, 
the, the prequels were maligned. Sure. And they were still maligned. I mean, it's been seven years, and and I feel like the fan base has done a complete 180 on the prequels in those seven years, or eight years now, right? But, I mean, at the time, if you go back and look at Phantom Menace with th- those being the last Star Wars films, right? There was a lot of negativity around that. And to be honest, I do think these films did make it right for the prequels because they've made us reappreciate the prequels in a way. So I'm I'm saying I don't think it was meant as I think I time is, now, I think time has strong. done that more right. than the than the sure than the, than sure than and this I'm trilogy. not and I'm not saying that that line is intentionally aimed at the fans. I just think that's a fitting opening line for this trilogy. Yeah, I also I, I right. think it's a, a line that JJ threw in there as a setup to, for something further that he didn't ever envision it never following got paid up off. on. Yeah, yeah, but then you know he ended up finishing the trilogy, so there you go. Um, but yeah, this whole the whole beginning of the movie is just phenomenal. It's, it is it's a it's a roller coaster cool. ride. It takes you on a mm-hmm. ride, and it is a ton of fun, and it really informs you about all of these characters in the first what is it like twenty minutes? I guess first twenty minutes we get all the characters. Um, the first twenty minutes we also get a great we get a great like um like sampler platter of the music. Yeah. Because the the first order the first order music in that opening shot we get Ray's theme we get the music in that Tie Fighter sequence we get oh I can my God. I can fly anything it is so with, good I can I can fly anything oh. with with Poe um, and I think this might be uh, the March of the Resistance I think for me is my favorite track from this movie hmm. really? um, which is where the the X wings are flying over the lake on Takadana mm-hmm. yeah 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 like yeah. that that's a great that, theme that yeah. to me because it really reminds me of the um, the Trade Federation, a little theme, bit, yeah. Which I, I think you. the Trade Federation mm-hmm. theme is amazing, um, but I don't know. It, it's you're me hard pressed to find a track from John Williams that you just no, don't like. Sure, yeah, <laughs> you're right. But um, but yeah, I think I think that that the first twenty minutes, like race theme, is amazing. I love race, yeah, um, great and it's totally sets this very like this mood where you don't know anything about Ray Ray yet, but you know that a she's a scavenger. You're seeing her scavenge. You know that she's a loner. Because she, A, because she's alone, but B, that there's this sort of hollow emptiness in that music that's just very atmospheric and, like, beautiful. It's this, like, the way it starts, it's like just this this melody going through nothingness, right, in a great way. And I think that it sets the tone so much for her character. Um, yeah, I think it, the, the tone, or the, the track, rather, uh, really adds to the inquisitiveness of, like, who is right. Ray And... It has that peculiar type of tone to it that really underscores and highlights the, this introduction of Rain. Because we first see her and she's masked, right? So you don't know who this person is, which is kind of plays into the whole thought of the question of who is Ray. Right. And so and she the takes trailers off the really and, sold that too, yeah. right? Because there was the whole, like, who are you, Maz Kanata? Oh, the Maz Kanata, yeah. The, you know. Yeah, yeah. In the trailers, yeah, I mean, it's it's the character's great, and fucking hell, man, seeing the innards of a star destroyer that's just oh. gutted out like that is so very cool. cool. Very cool. Um, a lot of great imagery mm-hmm. in, the, in the opening and, of this movie. And there's something I always talk about when I, when I talk about a new hope is that the mystery behind what is the Clone Wars, right? Or what is like you know what was the galaxy like when you know a th- you know a, a th- for a thousand generations the Jedi, yeah, have, you know. This movie does that same thing visually that Obi-Wan's speech gives, right? Because Obi-Wan's speech verbally, to, it's, you know, the show not tell thing. Obi-Wan's speech tells you, hey, there's this great time that we don't get to see, mm-hmm. right? The Jakku scenes give you visually that same idea of what the fuck happened here. Yeah, when you see because, the Vista with the X-Wing and the Star Destroyer, and mm-hmm. she's zooming across, and you're like, yeah, something because happened I, here. I don't think the movie tells us, or maybe the movie does at some point tell us that this was the la- where the last battle of, of... I don't think it does. No. No, I think it's only in the okay. books, yeah. You, yeah, they, they make it clear that a battle happened there. Yeah, sure. But you don't know that it's like the last battle yeah. of the war. Yeah. But this, this, this is where the last battle of the war. Which was is fun fought. too. Which is I mean, like going beyond the movie because then you play Battlefront and you get to play the last well, battle. Battlefront, and like they Battlefront. expand on Jakku so much that when you go back and watch the Force Awakens, it really adds. Because you've to, got you've got Battlefront, you've got Lost Stars, and you've got um, 
uh, the Aftermath trilogy all tell a different angle of the same conflict, yeah. and they all do it so well. Um, and they actually do intermingle. You get like when you're in Battlefront, you hear some of the lines from yeah. Lost Stars. You know, it's all set up so well. Um, yeah, I fucking love Jakku. For as much as people bitch about, oh look, another desert planet. Sure, Jakku is Why so. Does everyone want to cool. go back to Jakku, <laughs> right? <laughs> great line. It's a great line. It is. Which is like, is that a subtle jab at why does everyone go back to a sand planet just because it reminds <laughs> you of the original trilogy? Like maybe a little bit. You know. So I mean, like, see, like that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you can take these lines. Any line from this movie and put and put and meaning put, to them. Yeah, put, sure. You know, you're so. right. You're you but I do think I do think it is like I do think as an audience these lines do mean something to us regardless of the writer's intent, right? Like sure. So to me that like this will begin to make things right. Like that line me- meant something to me. Yeah, if you want to read know. it that way, by all means, go right. ahead. Right, and, and not that yeah. I was ever negative on the prequels because mm-hmm. I love the prequels and I always have. Um, that being said, I like some of them less than others, right? And. I do think overall, like mistakes were made with the prequels, um, but yeah, this this sequel trilogy for me did begin to make things right in this, but more so, if anything, the Clone Wars did that, right? Sure. Like, um, yeah. Okay, so we get you fought in the Clone Wars. <laughs> <laughs> you fought in the Clone Wars, well, same as your father. Um, I so was once a Jedi in the Knight. Clone Wars. Yeah. <laughs> so then we get we get Poe and Finn. Yeah, we get Unkar plot. Unkar plot. Simon Pegg. Um, everything all comes together. We can see a half a boar's butthole. Yeah, I just really, man, what a wide load. That was our first butthole <laughs> in Star Wars. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Wow, the butthole cut. Look at that. <laughs> Happened. No, it's just the regular cut. Yeah, just the regular well, yeah, 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 it's still, yeah. it's in yeah, the it's regular, regular cut. cut. You, brought up, you brought up the March of the Resistance earlier, and that sequence, I remember it being, it exciting me so much in the theater, because I think it's done so well, where you get to a point where you completely forget that the resistance is a thing for right. a second. Like you forget that the good guys also have an army, you know, <laughs> sure. you're like, Oh my God, like the first order is attacking. Like what is going to, what are they going to do? Right. And it's sudden, it's so misleading too, actually, when you mm-hmm. think about it, because when you go back to it, when you look at the resistance, like, Oh, these guys are way overmatched, way, way over overwhelmed by the first order. It was just in this one instance they they were they got but lucky. On, but, uh, yeah, but on like a <laughs> well, I, a small I'll, scale I battle, they could put that. up a fight. Yo, 100%. I want to talk about that. You know, n- n- with episode eight, sure, because I actually disagree with that statement of them being overmatched. I think that they weren't sure. I think Lucasfilm wasn't sure <laughs> if they were overmatched or not. Well, you know, like it's quite like, possible. Like that because, battle yeah. on Takodana is like a smaller scale, right? It's just Definitely. surrounding that one right that plot one of land. It's, it's yeah. surrounding Maz's castle. Yeah, and um, and in general, I think like what we come to realize, not just like with the First Order, but with the Empire, is they're spread super thin, and they run well, on fear. So, and this is something that e- this is something that even still me being so engrossed in Star Wars and and kind of knowing as much as I know about. Star Wars and especially cuz I geek out on the military side of Star mm-hmm. Wars and the and the you know the less the Jedi stuff and more the other stuff um I don't know how big the first order actually is at this point because yeah, big. because we know they have we know they and this is where my whole thing about them being overmatched we know they've got one outpost space station that's probably Ilum and we see Pretty like big, though. It's pretty sure, big. Sure. <laughs> but we see two or they, three We saw we saw a side by side comparison. But if we but if we compare the number of individual star destroyers in the in this trilogy versus mm-hmm. the other trilogy, and if they're only fighting the resistance because the Republic doesn't have an army, right? The First Order is not very big either, and they don't need so, to no, be. They're, they're not. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So but, like, yeah. But I'm saying the conflict isn't very big in these mm-hmm. movies. There just happens to be a super weapon or two. And yeah. a lot at stake. And, <laughs> and and I think, yeah, they're not massive. They do have a formidable military. Right. And like we not to jump ahead, but in the Rise of Skywalker, we see that they like try to take over the galaxy and they kind of succeed, but they're like, hey, we don't have enough like right. star destroyers and stormtroopers to do this. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. in the same way the Empire yeah. had or that the Grand Army of the Republic was. Mm-hmm. It's it's a much smaller force. And their eyes were bigger than their stomachs. Yeah. Yeah. They're absolutely. like, all right, we took out the Republic, but there's so many planets. Well, it's anything. And, and I'm wondering, I mean, we'll talk about Palpatine's hubris later, right? Yeah, sure. They're like, I'll be like, the first one to conquer them all. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so what do, what do you guys think about um uh, our first encounter with Han in these films? And what do you guys think of the Rathars? 
Look, I, you know, you I, pro? I was remembering I mind the people cars. were like, what the? I'm like, guys, yeah, this is Prana, Star man. Wars. We're going to have some I'm sorry. wacky stuff. I'm sorry we got aliens in Star Wars. Yeah. You're not hauling Rathtars on this podcast, are you? <laughs> I am. I am. On the Irvana. What's a Rathtar? There's one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. King, I'm I'm getting him to King Prana. He's paying a. What's King Prana the king of? How much power does King Prana have? Uh, well, he has a, a a lake full of piranhas. First of all, King if Prana, we don't, king of the piranhas. Look, if we don't have the Rathar sequence, we never get to see Mark Ellis in Star Wars. So <laughs> that means you know this what? Rathar sequence Here's, is okay. majorly important. So, so you've you've stumbled on one of my complaints about the sequel trilogy. One guy that looks a lot like Mark. <laughs> no, it's that we don't <laughs> get we don't get adequate scum and villainy mm-hmm. in the sequel trilogy. Yeah. They're they're kind of just set dressing, and not that like they're that big of a deal in the pre in the in the the Republic original. cleaned up the galaxy. They had a great program. <laughs> well, <laughs> because they're not they're not really that big of a deal in the prequel trilogy. Like we don't get a lot of scum and villainy in the prequel trilogy, but there's a lot of other moving parts. But in this, we get these glimpses of like, okay, who's Country Club? Kanja Club, yeah. right? Or who's um, the Guavian Death Gang? Like, okay, who the fuck are like these are gangs that have n- that now suddenly exist that probably exist in the back in the in the mm-hmm. vacuum created by the lack of the huts. Right. You know, so where who are they? Where are they? But from? Is, that's not really uh, important. You're right; it's not important, but it could have been. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, and I'm sure. And, and all I'm saying is, like, depending on the story you're telling, I I agree with that. I agree with that. But I'm saying none of that was called back to in like there was an opportunity to call back to that in Rise of Skywalker. Right. There's an opportunity to integrate more of that because in Rise of Skywalker, we do get, again, a little bit more of that scum and villainy criminal element. But it's not it yeah. doesn't mm-hmm. it all feels so disjunct in a way that I don't think it is in the original trilogy. Now, granted, part of that is because Jabba got CGI edited back into into. Right. You know, uh, A New Hope. So he's a wonderful know, human being. He's a wonderful human being or a wonderful Scottish man in a, in a, in a <laughs> weird fur kilt. <laughs> You know, it's yeah, it's so that's just like a minor thing is like, I feel like there's something really cool here. And we don't really get to see it. Sure. And I feel like this trilogy does a this trilogy does a really good job of like, hey, there's some cool shit here. We don't really see it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's a lot of large part of what the original trilogy is. You yeah. Know? But it's like, also, there's a lot out there, but it's like we're I, I we're, fo- we're focused yeah. on, you know. The we're, Luke we're story, on our uh, yeah. but we also have the whole Jabba's palace sequence. We have, you know, it, I mean, but that comes at the end of the trilogy. I know. You know? I, I feel it. like so. I feel like the the disadvantage with this trilogy is like, let's say, like you you start off at a New Hope, and you've already seen the prequels. Let's mm-hmm. say you're going in chronological order. Um, like, okay, you know that the Empire, that like the Emperor, like you know these people because the prequels sets up the rise of the Emperor and the creation of the Empire. But between the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy, it's there's like, no. Yeah. It's like okay, all of a sudden there's like a new republic. There's a first there's not order, a lot of connected tissue. There's this guy named yeah. Snoke in charge, and somehow like Han Solo and Leia's kid is like his apprentice. Like yeah, like what's going on? <laughs> yeah, there's there's not a lot of connected tissue in a weird way, and not again. These aren't these aren't me. Like I love Force Awakens. I think it's a great film. I think it's a great kickstart to the new new trilogy. Um, I, I just like some of this yeah. uh, feels weird. And also the other it thing still works. The other thing I'm, I'm kind of going to counter my own point here. Part of the reason we know so much, so much about those things is because it's been fucking 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It hasn't been yeah, 40 yeah, yeah, years yeah. with, I'm sure in the next 20 years, we're going to get a lot of this stuff built out. And I really fucking hope yeah. we do be better. I'm, but, I'm just like saying in terms of the movies, but like, it's not that big of a deal because it is also kind of like George Lucas's vision of making everything serialized. You're just like mm-hmm. plopped right into the action. Well, and at the same yeah. time, at the same time, there is this issue. Is- issue that's why it- we have crawls to begin with. <laughs> Fair. There is this issue with, uh, with star Wars content in general of mm-hmm. like us focusing too much on, on individual eras. Like so much of star Wars content focuses on, you know, the time between the prequels and the original trilogy and the original trilogy, right? There is not a lot of Star Wars content yet focusing on this time period. Um, so once we start getting that, that will really flesh some of it out. Um, okay, Maz's Mas castle. How do you feel? Isn't that badass? Isn't that cool? I liked, I liked it. It was. <laughs> it was. It sure was. She was been, a thousand years, been, bro. That, yeah, this water hole for a thousand years. First order was like, not anymore, can I, bro. Can I give you another, <laughs> another character I want to know about? more I want to know more about and I know there actually is content out there for this character I just haven't read it Constable Zuvio Constable Zuvio is cool (laughs) but he's cut from the movie but Sedona Thano the Crimson Corsair the guy in the the dope dope red red? helmet yeah 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 yeah. I know there's more content out there for him I just haven't dove into it he's not one of the ones 
He's one of the ones that Finn Finn's goes gonna with. Go with. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was between that and the Death Gang. I'm like, okay. No, no, no. no. The the Crimson Corsair, Sedona mm-hmm. Thano. Give me oh, one thing I wanted end. to say about the Rothar Rath, sequence, Rothar sequence, um, is that while it may seem like, why, what are we doing here? It does give you more insight into who Ray is, which I think mm-hmm. is very mm-hmm. key. You see how smart she is with you know the yeah. the locks and the systems like that and and let you in cuz it's like we we feel like we know that right. she's going to be someone with the force and and there's like there's a part where they're getting um into where they think they're getting hauled in by the first order and she pulls this crate right it's a heavy ass crate we later see Chewbacca holding it up like it's nothing yeah. but when they're going in there first it's Finn and her mm-hmm. lifting this this the that bottom um level whatever the crate from the flooring pull it up it's really heavy but when they're going down in there you see she pulls it by herself over on top oh, of the them. grate the grate yeah the grate that's the grate. we're looking for and she pulls it by herself which is like i don't know if that's intentional or not but i always read it as there's a like maybe she couldn't have a normal human couldn't have pulled it but because she was helped by aid of the force unbeknownst to her she's able to so i feel like there's like little tiny little well i have a I have things a, of that like pepper in there that let you know just how force sensitive I have a this counter, character can, is going to be i would counterpoint to that go ahead we know that han or lando could have done that cuz those are their smuggling yes apartments. but that was in the hallway this is in the middle of the commun- communal section sure but i think it's they're the same. different they're different yeah groups. but I, different I think groups. it's the same that's my counter <laughs> to your counter i think we it's see the other same. examples like of like what you're kind of saying like when she's like that was lucky and like yeah, yeah there's, exactly there's a lot she's of attributing like the weird in my we didn't really talk about thing the, is luck we didn't really talk about ties the, into that we didn't really uh, talk about the falcon chase through the oh that's right the, we got it yeah the very star destroyer graveyard very good that's they're very much at that a lot of that that's, i agree yeah that's where i would pin that where she does that like weird air must have jedi reflexes fucking hell man <laughs> <What> <laughs> there, a it is, there it is i've seen pod, I pod racing on mouse very fast very dangerous i can't wait for the um the um uh what do we call them? The special editions for that. Oh one. my there's, gosh! When there's forty Tie Fighters in that scene, <laughs> man. <laughs> JJ goes back. Have you yeah. seen that edit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I have not seen that actually. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's just the same scene, but instead of like two or three Tie Fighters, it's like forty. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's really great. Um, oh boy, yeah, that's great a sequence. good. That's a beautiful sequence. It's yeah. so fun um, too. It's really, really fun. And the garbage will do. The garbage yeah, will do. The reveal just, of the Millennium Falcon so good. is really great. Well, and the way they the, the, way, the way they do that do it when they're running towards they're running towards a ship that we don't see, and then we see the quad jumper, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they you go can, they go not that ship that ship. It's such a blur garbage, in the background because yeah. they pan it so quickly. Yeah, yeah. It's a blur. You would you just you can't even tell it's a Millennium Falcon. What a great reveal! Yeah. It's really good. Not that one that ship's garbage. And you're yes. just, and then like it raises questions of like. How and why is that there? Right, why is the Falcon here? And they then explain it pretty it, quick. And they do explain <laughs> yeah, they it. they do explain, <laughs> they explain it, but still. It's a really stole funny... It from Duquesne who stole it from me. Yeah. Which um, really does inform you about like the, the adventures that Han... Or the misadventures, however you want to look at it, that Han has been on and why, since Return of the and Jedi. And why is Han not with his wife? It raises a lot of right? questions, which we do find out in this movie. Before, uh, so. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, Maz's Castle, I think it's badass. We get the flashback sequence. What do you guys oh, think? Oh, man. Not flashbacks, this? but the weird dream sequence. You get Yoda's voice, Obi-Wan's voice, two different Obi-Wan's voice. Two different Obi-Wan's? Yeah. Both. Um, yeah, yeah. You see the hallway on Bespin. Oh, from Empire I'm just back. glad they got Alec Guinness to record those Ray lines. <laughs> yeah. It's now, I will say, didn't want to do this it. actually reminds me that Kevin did send in a statement. Ray? Wait, he sent you the statement? He did. He's he said, send uh, me the statement. Statement for The Force Awakens. In my top three, easily. Okay, um, that's it. That's what he said. <laughs> but I, but but the reason I'm reminded of his statement is because uh, I remember Kevin. I think it was a, a short video he posted online or whatever he sent to me at least of him how you get Alec Guinness to say Ray and he did like a quick edit of it's how a, it's the afraid words, right it's the word something afraid? I forget what it yeah. is yeah, yeah. but he like but I remember Kevin making like a little short clip of like you take this this you edit blah 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 boom he says Ray and I was like yeah. okay cool from from what I remember um it's they took the word afraid and they Makes took sense. Ray yeah. out yeah, of yeah. afraid but um, but this this vision sequence I was analyzed over analyzed oh, torn apart Knights for of years. And we were wrong about everything. Everything. Not really. We were. We, some people nailed some things, but yeah. but like, 
we were we were wrong about a lot of stuff, but man, was that a fun time! It was Star Wars so game, fun. Right? It was like it's a great sequence. It just it throws a lot at you. It gives you little peeks of like, well, what happened with Luke? Mm-hmm. What, what's going on with Kylo Ren? I mean, it was. Uh, who is who Ray? Are, who you know? are the Knights of Ren? Are the Knights of Ren? I still don't know. <laughs> we will never know. That's okay. That's okay. That's not true. That's we'll find out in thirty years. Yeah. Uh, no, we know. We know pretty much. Even you. Yeah, know but, I but, but, but the then we did. Ren. Had no idea. Yeah. I've never faced. Well, so the Master of the Knights of Ren is a great callback to Vader being the Lord of the Sith before we knew what the Sith was, mm. because Vader was the Dark Lord of the Sith, but we didn't know what the Sith were. Until episode one. Yeah, that's one. true. That's true. But so, so much so that they don't say the words. So they don't. They you're don't. Right. But in a lot of the marketing materials and really? in, in other other media, mm. there was this idea that Vader was the Lord of the Sith. And we didn't know what that was. So when you get the Thrawn trilogy, Timothy Zahn wrote what the Sith were. And then Lucas like, all right, don't, don't, how about you don't, yeah, all right, sure, don't, don't call them the Sith. That's different. It's something <laughs> else. Don't just don't mm. use that. They're still there. The Nagri became oh. this. The Zon invented the Nagri. I like the way you be, rolled your R there. I don't know why I did nice. that, but I was it like, sounds wow, great. Is that how you say it? Oh my it, God. it should be <laughs> the Nagri. The Nagri. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds. It sounds like a, you. You didn't roll your R's. You rard your you, R's. Yeah. <laughs> you Chewbacca your R's. You Chewbacca. Uh, the, the Nagri are what Zon decided were the Sith, and then Lucas was like, "Oh no, that's not the Sith. Don't do that." And then we find out in the prequels what. The Sith are um, They're the because baddies. because they call Vader. But so, anyways, that that whole Master of the Knights of Ren thing to me is a callback to that idea of like, okay, what are the Knights? What's of a Ren? Ren? What's a Ren? Right, like, <laughs> like you're Kylo Ren. What's the mat? What's the yeah. what are the Knights of Ren? Um, and I also appreciate that we very quickly learn that Kylo is oh solos is uh, a solo. You just right? call me solo, like. There's not, there's not this like You're a big deal, <laughs> big deal. Great, it's so good. Anyways, yeah. There's not this like weird buildup of like the reveal. Of you know, the reveal. It's just like no. Midway through the movie, Snoke says he's yeah. he's Han Solo's because yeah, like you do think of like his. I remember thinking at least watching the movie for the first time. I was like, is he? Solos, because remember, I didn't go into this movie mm-hmm. with a lot of you know other other stuff, yeah. reading a lot of stuff or whatnot. Well, I, so think, I was pretty naive well, then to I will whatever you, was out there. I will tell with. you, the general consensus was that Ray was going to be. Oh, that's yeah, right. Well, because like in the movie, and even in the movie, it's it, kind of still kinda, threaded. Yeah. So in the movie, when like, they go to Takadana, he's looking yeah, at her. And it's he's still like, kind of threaded. Like, who is she? Right. Like, it almost feels like, and there's nothing wrong with this. If they didn't know. If they hadn't made a decision yet who Ray was yet, I don't give a fuck. They didn't know Luke and mm-hmm. fucking Leia were brother sister yet. Right. In fact, I'm pretty sure George wasn't even sure Vader was going to be uh, uh, Luke's dad yet. I know Vader mm-hmm. is German for dad. Yeah. But I think that's more Luke is playing with his fucking daddy issues because guess what? He has them. Well, we all wow. do. Like, Sick um, burn, bro. <laughs> yeah, George. Hey, George, you know what? If you're watching burn. this, I know about your dad. <laughs> I know about your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I know about your dad, George. Um, but no, yeah, I mean, I think like, I, you know, people like, like, oh, they played so much into who she was for her to be a nobody, like, makes no sense. But I'm like, of course everyone's going to ask. I don't know, they, they didn't really know. Of, of course Maz is going to go, who's the girl? Because she wants to know who this stranger is yeah. sitting yeah. at the table. And of course Kylo Ren's going to go, what girl? Because some random girl stole the map to Luke Skywalker? Yeah, I'd be pretty yeah, what pissed girl? too. Like, you know, like, it's not like... Guess he, what? If it was some random guy, I'd go, what guy? Yeah, he, right? Same thing. It's not like he secretly it's knows like, who this person is. Yeah, we're trying is. to... He's like, yeah, we're trying to hunt down a droid. Now you're bringing a girl into the situation? <laughs> what girl? Like, what but way? also, yeah, counter, yeah. counterpoint to that, we also know it's JJ. And JJ's yes. a big fan of, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, yeah, the yeah. mystery but box. I will say, like, Maz, I think, makes it pretty clear. She's like, hey, what you desire lies in front of you, right. not behind you. So forget yeah. about all the, your parents no, yeah, I think, coming and, back. And that's, and, so, yeah, you can you can talk about the mystery box type of thing, but I think that does set up what you're just talking about there, where it's like, no, no, what you seek is in front of you. Stop looking yeah, in the in past. Yeah, it's in episode nine. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, again, going back into that, that sequence of like, you know, what does that mean for her and how is she... Why is she hearing these hey, voices? Guess what? Pati- in guess particular? what? I'm still not sure. <laughs> I honestly, <laughs> I the, think that's fine. At the time, before like the fans like tired me out, when I heard Obi Wan's voice, I was like, oh, maybe she's a Kenobi. I, that's where I went. Know. That's you where know? I went. Because I'm like, 
I'm like, it's always kind of. I think it makes sense to have like a Skywalker and a Kenobi in this story. I'm still. I will actually. Chris Terrio and JJ went. What if it was a Skywalker I will say, and a Palpatine? I will say that when Maz says, um, you know, you're waiting for your family to come back, but they're not coming back. You know who could come back? Dead. You know who could Ochi come back? stabbed them in the you know, face. You know who could come back? Luke Skywalker. And I was like, wait, is Luke Skywalker? Dad? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I was like, wait, is she trying to say that like? Who you think is your family is not, they're not coming back, but guess who could come but back? you can call your Luke daddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, daddy Luke. He likes nipples. Uh, yeah. That's what oh, And so fuck. I was like, huh, that's interesting. Could be. Could be. Oh, boy. That was a weird thing to say. That was a weird thing. But yeah. he, in the, all right, we get, have you seen The Last Jedi? Yeah. You all have. Uh, Keep talking. I'll be, I'll be right back. Okay, all right. Brandon, yes. what um what did you think about Han and Leia's reuniting? Uh it was very sweet. You changed your hair. Yeah. Same jacket. Yeah, I do like that. Um it shows to me like like they really do love and admire one another. Mm-hmm. It just didn't work out. Yeah, I noticed you and Sabrina talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. Oh my god. <laughs> I was setting you up for that one. <laughs> hey, you know, the people are less fortunate than to, you know, still uh, have feelings of affection and admiration. Can I can I point out the reason why Frank so left? Because Frank forgot the laptop charger. He Ooh. wanted to be all subtle about it, but I'm going to call him out live on air. I was actually going to say it. I was actually gonna, okay. I was but gonna, I was actually gonna say it. perhaps <laughs> you didn't notice his red arm. Yeah, I didn't, you know, didn't recognize you know, Okay, it. so I like the red arm. I love yeah. that. It's a great callback to the silver leg, mm-hmm. you know. It's a um, funny joke. Yeah. Okay. So we we roll on to, um, what's that fucking planet called? Where the first resistance base, the the resistance. Well, that would be uh, the planet Dakar in the Ilenium system. The Ilenium system. I wanted to call this show the Ilenium podcast, (laughs) but I got outvoted. Yeah, you did. I don't think I heard that one. <laughs> no, that he never said that. I that was never a thing. I died a few. Uh, <laughs> another another one I should have mentioned this during the Phantom Menace is uh, for us to call the show. I ask you to podcast. <laughs> no, I beg you to podcast. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, those are my top two. So you guys talking about when I left? Kind we're we're talking about Dakar. We're on to Dakar. Oh, okay, cool. Dakar, Dakar, Dakar. Well, actually, no. We should jump back. We get we get a little first ordery stuff. We get the 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 destruction of planet the Republic. Did we talk about the introduction. Of planets that are somehow very close together uh yeah uh-huh uh, that's so weird and you can see the ships their hey. their fleet you can see it it doesn't look that impressive hey science boy explain that to me i mean it depends i, I didn't really see them orbiting a sun I don't know, it was weird weirdly done i think yeah so i will how tell you, you how the i will tell you how the books explain how do you program those like laser beams to go to I just, well, hold on. So, i was saying the other day so, like they're David, just energy like, so fun fact the books explain it totally different really in the books they blow up the sun what in the novelization they blow up the sun well they absorb a no, 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 sun right and then blow up the sun on Hoss. they use a sun to blow up a sun yeah. Interesting. Why, not just, why, not just, why not just go to the Hosnian Prime Sun and just suck it up? They, yeah, that would work too. Yeah. But, well, actually, maybe Why not did they invent they, a machine that sucks and blows when they only needed to make one that well, sucks? Well, they didn't. They invented... Wait a minute. How can you have a planet basically go through hyperspace? I does mean, it? I mean, how yeah, else would it, it travel? It does? Because you have to get to another star after you deplete it, after you use it. Right? Mm-hmm. Unless there's only one shot? Well, how does okay. The, how does the so, Death Star go through hyperspace? So, I don't see any thrusters on that thing. As far as I'm aware, yeah. as far as I'm aware, when we see the galactic map, um, uh, Starkiller Base is in the same spot as Ilum, so it hasn't moved very far. Because <laughs> it is Ilum. It's definitely it's Ilum. Be Dungey's right. been to Ilum. So in, well, in, so <laughs> spoilers, uh, I'm about to spoil um, uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Or at least a small Easter egg in Fallen Order. So if I'm sorry, you haven't beaten Fallen Order too fucking late. Um, if you you go to Ilum in Fallen Order to get a new lightsaber crystal, right? If you leave and then come back, you see it mined out mm-hmm. across the center. Oh yeah, in the same yes, way. Yes, that's right. The Star right. Killer Base because because the right. the Empire was working on Star Killer Base. Well, the Empire was mining Kyber crystals. Mm-hmm. Now, what may have happened was they mined that out and then have later turned it into Star Killer. Because I think I, I remember reading something. I was like doing like a Wikipedia deep yeah. dive the other day. Yeah. And I read something that like they were doing it during the reign of the Empire. And it was like 
part of Palpatine's master plan to create three Death Stars for some reason. Because he knew that the first two would get blown up. <laughs> well, in Legends, he was Third crea- times a charm. In Legends, you know? he was creating the Death Stars to fight um, <laughs> the Yuuzhan Vong. Which is uh, I like. I like the idea. I like the idea. I of do that. like the idea of to a certain degree. I think it's interesting. Yeah, that like um, that he has that he's building the Death Stars for a reason for an existential threat. I just don't like the Yuuzhan Vong, right? <laughs> like, there's my issue, I right? Got, I think they're dumb. I'm I like, sorry. I like. I, I don't know much about the Yuuzhan Vong if they're from a different galaxy or if they're from the unknown know, regions. They're, they're weird but, bioorganic things. But I, that do, are, I do like the idea somewhat of like invaders from another galaxy coming into the Star Wars galaxy and the Emperor knows this and he's trying to build up his military to fight this external threat right? while also trying to fight a civil war. I, think, I love it. I yeah, I like that. I also am a big fan of that as like this background medium. I don't know whether or not we'll get it again um, or if later we'll build upon that. I If we do, great. I think there's some stuff in High Republic. I think there's some stuff in the the, the new Thrawn trilogy. I think there's some stuff in um, potentially what we're getting with some of the new series that we could introduce some of those threats and then later find out, oh, yeah, that was the why the Emperor was, you know, like so obsessed with. This, that, and the other thing. I think he just wanted to disband the Senate so he could just take over the galaxy with an iron fist. Right, in order to defend it, because the Empire yeah. did not. Oh, right. Because they like don't that. have that big enough of a military presence, like we said earlier. Hey, so did you know there's giants in Star Wars? Giants! Yeah. Stone look at, giants! Look at how big I'm Snoke was. <laughs> yeah, I Remember can't believe... when Snoke was a giant? Like, <laughs> I'm like... I was freaked out for about 30 seconds. I was like, whoa, that's cool. And then we find out he's not a giant. I was kind of disappointed. I was he's relieved. still tall. He's still tall. I was pretty dude. relieved. He's like, was he still like eight, nine feet tall? He's like nine feet tall. Yeah. yeah. How are they going to get him on a ship to fly him off Star Killer Base when that thing's blowing up? He's too big. <laughs> he's what too ship big. is he going to fit on? Well, he has a mech suit, Brandon. Oh dang. I guess. That's cool. That's cool. No, I was, I was like, wow, people didn't realize this guy. This was a projection. Like they just blew it up. Also, well, I don't I, that conference room. So, like you'd see all the all the I conference do. chairs. Yeah. Like the swim. Like like what were meetings like? So <laughs> like, so I don't think full? I don't think it was that, a boardroom meeting like on Star Killer Base. That's I, what I want. I do think that like probably Kylo knows Snoke's not a giant, right? Like mm-hmm. maybe I knew he wasn't a giant. Is this like a Wizard of Oz thing? Where like, yeah, I think it's a Wizard of Oz thing. They, he wants the first yeah. order to think that he's a giant. Yeah. <laughs> he's behind. What? Yeah. Uh, whoever Snoke was when they originally wrote Snoke was really obsessed with people thinking he's a giant. <laughs> uh, right? It is. It is uh, interesting, but um, I I I want to talk about like just a little bit more about how obsessed the Emperor was with making super weapons. He makes. He's. It's even more he, so in Legends. He makes two Death Stars. And Star Killer Base, kind of like all in the same twenty year span. Like yeah, he's. he's I, I'm pretty sure there, there's got to be one point in time where all three overlap. Um, uh, and, and then, on, and then on top of that, he's going over to Exegol every once in a while and telling the Sith Eternal, "Going, hey, so I'm going to need you to start building some Star Destroyers that each have planet killing capabilities. I know it's not going to be ready for about like forty, fifty years, <laughs> but if you can get we'll started get on, on that, that, yeah, like that'd be really cool." Yeah, if you could just get on that, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, he's fucking, he's like fucking Wiley Coyote, man. <laughs> and like, like, what's he going to do when he does rule the galaxy with an iron fist? Because like, the Empire, like. Start ha- blowing shit up because like, he's bored? The, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The Empire, like, you know, we see like in the Bad Batch and like Andor and stuff. The Empire, like, has, for those 20 years between the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy, like, the Empire had its struggles controlling the galaxy. Mm-hmm. That's why they needed the Death Star. What happens let's say in Rise of Skywalker, his master plan comes to fruition and he's got a planet destroying Star Destroyer at every single planet. He rules the galaxy with an iron fist. What does he do with his free time? Goes to the next one. The next galaxy? Mm-hmm. Is he the Usung Vong? Well, I mean, the real you've got... This, Usung this Vong is, is I the... feel like this conversation for another time, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, <I> was, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I get lost in the weeds here, but... Um, uh, I think it is an important conversation to talk about. Like it's another Death Star, and like people's complaints. Yeah, with that. I do. I will say I like the I like the lamp shading in that scene. Yeah, I like that they're like, no, this one's bigger, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like they're pointing out. They know how absurd it is, right? They're pointing out how absurd it is. There's no fucking illusion or mystery to like. Hey, maybe 
maybe they won't notice we have another Death Star. <laughs> no, they're like, yeah, we know you as an audience know this is another fucking Death Star. Yeah. Sorry, that's Star Wars for you, right? Like, Which I also think is really funny because like watching them in release order, it's fine. But if you watch them in chronological order, it's like in episode six, they just blew up the second Death Star. And right. now the next movie you put in the Blu-ray player, there's another Death Star. Yeah. No, no, no. It's a Star Killer. Three in four movies. Yeah, it's it's yeah yeah. Well, and then we basically get what essentially is a bunch of Death Stars in the last movie, right? True, true. But they're shaped like triangles. They're (laughs) trying. Well, they're no, they're shaped like Rogue One assets, which we'll talk about when we get to that movie. Um, I will say I'm not. I wasn't really like the biggest fan of Star Killer Base, if only because it's like, wait, it's another Death Star. I mean, yes, but it's also like, wait, are you fighting the Resistance or are you fighting the Republic? Mm Because like Star Killer Base. Like I, I thought I think you could have had uh, a really cool, massive space battle with a bunch of like dreadnoughts and different first order dreadnoughts star destroyers. Cool. Oh well, I've got and, some, like I've got. Some. I thought like and then like that's how they would take out the resistance because then without the resistance, then well you can just roll over the republic. You don't have to right. blow it up. The you republic could just doesn't have roll in there and occupy like it's freaking Poland. Uh, but that's not what happened, and I understand. <laughs> to all our Polish viewers out there, <laughs> we World love War you. You're great. Sorry. You Germany know. and Poland. My girlfriend's Sorry. half Polish. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm half Polish, so I can say this stuff. I are guess. You Mike, <laughs> that's are, what they are you, say. Are you are my you, girl? Are you his girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> only on every other weekend. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, well, only in your what do you say? Only in your mind, my young apprentice. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will say uh, I understand why they went the Star Killer route because. That name, first of all, was attached in the original trilogy, mm-hmm. the Luke, and then you paint again homage to A New Hope with the Death Star. So, like, I get all of that. I understand it, and I'm and I think it's a great sequence. Um, what happens on Star Killer, but yeah, like the the laser shooting off in seven different ways and stuff. Yeah, I was it's, like, oh, it's weird. Okay, I mean, it seems- very cool imagery when Kylo runs on the bridge and you see the laser go through. Yeah, and it's like dope imagery for yeah. sure. But like, and the Hux, right. although I although it's like you know fucking like lazy to make your you know general Hux be just Hitler but like I do I like it. I do like a that ham fisted but yeah you know, I get it yeah. it's a little ham fisted but I like that scene um I like which the, pays off in uh the resistance animated show yeah it does it's a very it cool point of view from another uh, anyways yeah I I do like um I like a lot of the design of the first order stuff I like a lot of the design of what we see on Star Killer, the entire aesthetic that's set up in this movie, I absolutely it's love. It's great, mm. and I love the f- I love the battle of like the battles on Star Killer base. But I absolutely agree, Frank. Like we didn't get a big, massive space battle in this trilogy. This I, is as close as we got. Actually. I know yeah, the opening the of the Awakens. Last Jedi, I would call a nice space battle. But but I'm talking like Revenge Re- of the Sith or or um, Rogue One. Right, we don't have anything like that where we have capital ships against capital yeah, ships. Yeah, that's true. Which I do feel like is the trajectory that Star Wars has been taking, right? Because Revenge of the Sith was a groundbreaking space battle, right? And then we get um, Rogue One. I think is the the best executed, mm-hmm. like combination of everything learned with Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it's that my favorite right. space battle. As far as space battles go, like Rogue One is is this pinnacle of... But, I mean, the Return of the Jedi Hardball is Hardball. the go. Yeah, you're right. But, you're but right. Rogue One but, is But Rogue One really takes great. everything yeah, everything. I think learned. I like it better even though... That's cool. I'm Rogue not, not going to hate you for that. Rogue One takes everything learned from, from Return of the Jedi and... Um, Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith and... Force Awakens. Force Awakens and Last Jedi and turns them into one... Yeah. Perfectly shot, perfectly uh, paced, and it's great. And everything space battle, and the sequel trilogy. I do think it would have benefited for from one of these, right? And the Battle of Starkiller mm-hmm. Base is great. I love it. The um, Battle above Dakar in in Episode Eight is great. Episode Nine exists. <laughs> um, you know, I I, just, I think the reason we probably didn't get those those epic battles in episode seven and eight because i think it was planned for episode nine well maybe that too but also mm-hmm. um the resistance just wasn't they didn't I create the resistance to have that size sure i and that I scale that. to go up against the first order in that way and they really painted yeah, an the underdog resistance, the resistance had old x-wings in a pipe dream okay <laughs> uh, fuck that because the, <laughs> the fucking here it, it, uh, hold on i'm calling bullshit on that and here's why that's the you just described the rebel alliance and sure. they and they managed to get a like 
No, they had Y wings too. <laughs> so did the fucking resistance. I didn't see any. They're in. Uh, they're in uh, episode eight. Yeah. What? On, there's one on the hangar in episode eight. No, they got those. I don't know what those things are called, but the ones. With oh, the, bombs. the fucking those fucking hate those. We'll talk about that next. I okay. thought they were cool. They're cool. They're impractical. There's an A wing. Right? There's an A wing. Tally. Yeah, Tally there's a lot of impractical Tally's things. Tallison. <laughs> Tallison. Tally Lynch, or greatest pilot the resistance ever. Her name really Tallison. Yeah. That's silly. That's cool. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Where are we at exactly? Because I feel like uh, we, we're we're on Star Killer Base. Still on Star Killer. We're on Star Killer Base. But you know what we really? need to talk You're about? Cold? We need to talk about Han Solo. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Han, Han Solo. Han Solo's they got a hey, trash compactor. Han Solo's co- <laughs> noble end. Uh, <laughs> Han Solo's yeah. funeral. We all saw this coming. Yeah. It ben. Was, ben. To me, what, it was that going. It was then. telegraphed a mile away. Sure, you're right. And I'm like, oh my god, this echoes Obi Wan meeting up with Vader in A New Hope for sure. Like, there's only yeah. one way this can go. 100. percent And Did you, I see. I disagree. I thought there was a world where we saw Ben have a little bit of a redemption right away. I I will say there's they, a world where I almost wish that happened. <laughs> that would have been very interesting. Where he just goes, you know what, Dad? You're right. Yeah, I love you. Throws the saber in the fucking. I will say they uh, th- this scene between Kylo and and Han they really do said I I remember watching for the first time I'm like oh my god he might actually yeah. go go with Han he might mm-hmm. he might do it because you know Leia and and Han have that that talk about Ben and bringing him home and I'm like oh man this might be actually happening might be because it. and because like Snoke is the big bad here we've set him up and now you're going to have Kylo come back home and it's going to be a whole thing and then they find Luke, and it's gonna be a whole big battle between light and dark, and what have you. But the way this scene is ultimately executed with the lighting schemes and contrasting with the, when the light is That's gone, so then we have no hope. You know, as long as we have light, we have a shot. And then it's the the transfer between the blue light and the red light, and it's it's very well done. And yes, you see it coming from a mile away, but to me at least, I was so invested in this relationship between Han and Kylo or Han and, and Ben, that, you know, because we had never seen them together. This is father and son. This is a new dynamic, and you still don't know a whole lot about what their relationship was like, and you're learning about it through this interaction, but it's so short-lived, that's what makes it tragic, because you feel like, we haven't been around Kylo. This is our first meeting with him. Han hasn't seen his son in God knows long, so we're kind of in his seat, and then he gets killed by his own son, and you feel... You know, no pun intended. A gut punch when Han goes because, first of all, we have such an attachment to Han, and 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 the way Kylo just is like, "Will you, will you help me?" And Han's like, "Yeah, anything," and he gets killed for it. And it's just you're chewy. You're like, yeah. "Get that some yeah. bitch." You know. And I love, I I absolutely love the fact that they illustrate earlier in the movie how powerful the bow caster oh, yeah. is multiple yeah. especially times. because multiple yeah. especially because in the original trilogy i think chewie only shoots the bow caster twice <laughs> like like he has it yeah for but sure but i think he only sh- ever shoots it on twice on bespin does he i think he shoots i think it he shoots the, it once on bespin yeah. and once in in um in return uh, return yeah and it's you know it's always been like yeah chewie's got a wookie bow caster he's always had the bow caster but we've never we've, seen the damage yeah, it could do i guess you know right so we see the damage in the movie and then we see the fucking Kylo just take a shot from it. Yeah. And to me, that really does a great job of illustrating the power of the dark side. Cause then for the rest Where of the movie, channeling. he's just yeah, he channels pounding yeah, yeah. his side mm-hmm. and like trying to channel the pain, channel the anger. This evolves into this chase through the, through the, Snowy Forest. Yeah, well, before we get into all that, which, yeah, the ties in, um, Ray, really, the force, her force awakening moment when she's um, talking to Kylo. Oh, you're going back. Yeah. Do we, did we talk about that? No. Is that but a pretty I, big okay. moment? Yeah. You don't think so? Where, she, where the scavenger resisted you? I mean, she's stronger than she knows. <laughs> I, I, look, I think it's good. I think it's great. I have no like. Yeah, I'm not saying I have an issue with it, but yeah, I mean, it's. I just didn't. I'm not. You know, I'm kind of pinpointing. Sure, sure, sure. But I think. It, but it plays into. Than, I think what, what how strong Kylo is, 
in, in the force. Because right. if, by ex post facto, is that even how you use that phrase? Mm. If he's that strong and Ray's resisting well, Kylo's mind, uh, darkness or rises about. and the light, light to, meet, to it. meet it. Frank. Yes. Yes, we know this. Um, but I, I no, just, I I'm just saying, like, the this is such. Is balance. It's such. <laughs> what are you doing to the mic? I don't. Know. <laughs> I just think it's Does a really <laughs> illuminating scene for Ray, um, and she's just like, and then when she's left alone, and uh, uh, Daniel Craig is there, and <laughs> and she's like, and she remembers all the myths about the Jedi. She's like, I wonder if this works. You know the the mind tricks. Yeah, I do. I do so love the, great. the comedic angle on that scene. Yeah. Like, I I think it's really well done. Um, I like her. David Craig, Daniel, Craig, that Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Craig, Craig, James Bond, was, David, yes. David, David Craig, <laughs> Benoit he's a singer. Blanc. I think he's a singer. David Craig. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to tighten those restraints, you scavenger um, scum. I do like. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's actually um, what's his if, name? If we're going back, we also should mention that's not how the force works. Yes. Oh, great. Right. You're cold. Great. Yeah. Great line. Big deal is. I mean, we know, we've kind of mentioned it, but yeah, we big mentioned a good deal. We'll use the force. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's some great stuff in this film, and I think it's really well done. Um, I love uh, Ray kind of climbing through the the Star Killer hangar. Absolutely. Um, the new putting, T17s. We didn't even. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. We didn't even talk about Phasma yet. Oh, well, there's not that much to talk. There's about. not that much to talk about Phasma. She is the Boba Fett of this film. She gets thrown and, in a trash compactor. She gets compactor. thrown in a trash yeah. compactor. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. All right, yeah, we find video. out Finn was a janitor. Yeah, <laughs> sanitation. Right? So, but all right, I do. Let's talk about the fight in the forest. Yes, uh, I think absolutely. Because uh, to me, so we. Look, what else you got? I was gonna say. I just think it's wild that the first order kidnaps kids just to clean the floors. It is messed <laughs> up. Yeah. I mean, who else is gonna do it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. Damn. Uh, it is. It is. Yeah, that, that is something they. It's really, they throw in there at the very beginning of the movie mm-hmm. about you know reconditioning, oh, reconditioning and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. also so, my soldiers are programmed from since birth. from birth, and they also know how to use a mop. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it is a it, it gives you that eventually pays off in Rise of Skywalker, but, right? Um, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Does it? Well, just because he's talking about how they've been programmed, programmed, mm-hmm. and taken away from their family, and. Mm-hmm. Wants to go find where you're from and all that, stuff. and it pays and, off. Now, I, I, I was just saying, like I, that, fra- like you understand. It's, re-refer- it's certainly, I guess, I guess, reference. Did the, not the, yeah. this did, did the Republic it, know that the first order was just snatching up kids? Uh, yeah, there was some evidence to that. Uh huh. Some evidence. There's like thousands of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they would have caught on eventually. No, they're incompetent. The New Republic was incompetent. They seem incompetent. Yeah, uh-huh. You know, were. I really like Mon Mothma in Andor, but yeah, it well, kind of sounds like she, she kind of I mean, goes... She's like retired, but by the time of Force Awakens, she's retired. But she's she's old. Bitch is old. She should show up. <laughs> she should have <laughs> showed bitch up. Bitch is old. Yeah, she's been through a lot. I mean, um, uh, I mean there's also... If, if we're talking about the New Republic and, and the Hosnian Prime scene, you have Corday. Is her name Corday? No. No. Her the one that died in her Attack of the Clones? Her name's Corsella. Okay. Um... She's one of the people that dies yeah. on in the Star Killer base. It was weird that they give she's, her such a like a, a well, shot, because, and it's like, am she, I supposed to know who you are? Yeah, she's Leia's aide. Ah, uh, okay. But she's Leia's aide I on never, a on a, like a diplomatic mission to yeah. the First Order to get more help. So that's why, like earlier, when you're like, oh well, you're reading the crawl. I'm like, the First Order, the or the the New Republic doesn't help the Resistance. Like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, Corsella is in there. Is supposed to be there, like. Getting assistance. I think there's more scenes that are cut. Maybe about I don't, that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I haven't got that deep with the movie. But uh, okay, so the, the fucking fight in the snow, yeah, man. Snow, snow fight. Snow I fight. fucking love this fight. It's one of my favorite lightsaber. It's one fights. of. It's absolutely one of my favorite lightsaber fights. It's the most vis. Like it's the most like, like um, real. Mm-hmm. And we have mostly untrained lightsaber fighters. Like yeah, Kylo's had some training, but. You could tell by the way he fights, he's all aggression and all, you know, he's almost forgotten everything he learned from Luke in mm-hmm. favor, of, favor of this darker, more aggressive fighting style. And it doesn't serve him well. Whereas we see, you know, in the next movie, he kind of almost seems like he's learned a pretty mm-hmm. good lesson from that fight and is fighting with a lot more yeah. acuity. And, and he's like clearly like bleeding to death from the bowcaster, sure. which is a big issue, but also... Uh, because obviously there's been so many debates and everything about Ray being able to fight Kylo Ren, but honestly, like I always saw it like 
the darkness rises, the light to meet it. That yeah, it's called the Force Awakens. It's I, the, I always saw it. The Force, the light side of the Force, was using Ray as a conduit, sure, to combat Kylo Ren and the dark side. And I think you're absolutely right about that. I think that is the intention of the scene. Yeah. Um, I also think, in terms of her ability with the lightsaber, I think it's pretty well set up with her ability with she the staff. Yeah, we see the her staff. fight I mean, with like, the They staff set that up on. pretty well. They make a point of like, mm-hmm. she uses this staff all the time. She knows how to use it. When you, you have a lightsaber, not that much different. And then when also you're um, imbued with the force, like mm-hmm. all that, and she, she really taps into it during Just, a, yeah. during like a halfway point of the yeah. fight. You know? I mean, and, she spent her whole life basically on her own. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, she had to learn to defend herself. Yeah, like, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Force has a will, as we learned from the prequels. It's not something for the Jedi to just manipulate. And if yeah, the Force right. decides to make you f- go toe-to-toe with Kylo Ren for 10, 15 minutes, then that's what's going to happen. It's, not, it's like three minutes. I mean, like... Well, I don't know. You know, you know movie time versus real time. But, but I think well, the, the moment we do have to talk <laughs> about, absolutely, is... I in, me, in my estimation, for me personally, one of the best moments in Star Wars... Is when Ray calls to yes. Luke's lightsaber, and the music kicks in. She she grabs a lightsaber, she lights it up, and she's like, "Holy!" I don't know shit, about you guys, but in my theater and me personally, I think I caught everybody by surprise yeah. when she oh. caught that lightsaber. I was well because 1, they show Kylo trying yeah. to grab it yeah. first. I was one thousand percent waiting. That I thought it was gonna be Luke. I thought it was gonna be Luke one hundred percent. Yeah, I think I think so too. Well, thanks for showing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't even and be I happy love, to see him. And I love the Kylo line. That's mine. <laughs> that lightsaber, it belongs to me. It's right. killed many Come children. It. <laughs> it's Finn, yeah. it's it, you know, I love that callback because we see, you know, it gives that great corollary because we see in the beginning of the film his dad yelling, that's mine! <laughs> you know, because <laughs> Kylo is Unkar Plutt's son. Yeah. You know? clearly, clearly. clearly. He's a love child. So Ray hears that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ray's, Ray, you know, it's the same thing. When Ray has a day off, she's running around, she steals an ice cream cone from a kid. That's mine! <laughs> Uh, Sean, no, but talk about that moment goes, when Ray this is gets... garbage. <laughs> I, I think that moment's fu- I, for me. For me, it's less about that individual moment and more about mm-hmm. the scene as a whole. Where Finn, like Finn does this valiant effort to try to fight. Yeah, yeah. Kylo. Finn doesn't do well. You know, we have um, Ray holding her own against Kylo. The and I'm going to be honest, man. Kylo's fucking scary in this scene. He is. The way he's tearing through the forest, mm-hmm. we're seeing cutting down trees. It's the first time we've seen lights, like the lightsaber in the snow, snow in that way. Yeah, very cool. Right, just like w- how Nine has the lightsaber in the rain. This is a lightsaber in the snow. Yeah. It's it's just this great scene. Yeah, I like this idea that that also there's this thematic i thematic. You're getting further and further there's from this, the mic. There's this thematic, <laughs> there we there's go. This thematic idea that the uh, that Luke's lightsaber is Excalibur. Uh, there's this thematic idea that Luke's <laughs> lightsaber is Excalibur. It is the hero's weapon. Mm-hmm. Whoever the hero of our story is has this weapon, right? It's Anakin, and then Luke, and then Rey. And although, yeah, Anakin falls, you know, Luke and Rey are using it for the light side of the Force and for good. Um and that the saber is choosing Ray over Kylo. He calls to you exactly that that whole idea that that whole I, which again we still don't really know where the, the fucking lightsaber came from. I think there is a comic actually. I'm, I'm sure. But do you think <laughs> do you think that Ray like reached out for it, or do you think she was just standing there minding her own business and the thing just flew at her? No, she, I, I think she, she reached. I think, I think she called for yeah, her. yeah, because I think the force the force helps them, those who help themselves. Right. Like mm-hmm. like the you know, it's not the force, although it does to an extent have a will of its own. It's not controlling the wills of others. Right. It's guiding the mm-hmm. wills of others. So whether the force, you know, kind of called to Ray to call to the saber, Ray would have to take a proactive step in order for the saber to come for come to her in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's my thoughts. On, well, on when that. the music swells up. Oh, it's amazing. It's, yeah. it's, it's, I remember my, my theater really did uh, erupt. Erupt. Yeah. And it was it was a phenomenal movie going experience. Uh, one I can still hear mm-hmm. the crowd. I could I still know exactly where I was sitting for my first viewing of this movie. Not ideal seating, but it was what it was. And I still had a great time. And when this moment happened, yeah, I was waiting for Luke. I thought it was going to be Luke. And but when it was Ray, I was like, oh shit, this is this is something like it. 
it was really something special to watch mm-hmm. because of the way it made me feel about because you know it's this whole who are you type of thing and you can be anybody and I think as an audience member for at least a first time watch you know you relate to that so it it packs a little bit more of a punch in in that regard I think for for some people and uh, I just it's one of my favorite moments in all of Star Wars absolutely yeah it's really great I'm a big fan I don't I don't um feel the same way but yeah yeah um i love the fight there's a better um, eight minutes out there there's a better eight minutes out there <laughs> absolutely absolutely there's a better eight minutes there. and uh we should and talk- you know what that involves tally lintra i want to talk about greg grunberg poe dameron nine nub can i say real quick Hello about uh, the fight though jessica henwick is in this she is yeah yeah she plays um jess pava that sounds about right i was gonna say real quick about when when ray is uh, using the lightsaber, she does some palpatineisms. Uh, I don't. Saber. I don't put any. I think stock that's a coincidence. That. Yeah, that's a coincidence. You think so? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it was just that's you know because because there's no. I don't know. Was it a coincidence that her no way. grandpappy is palpatine? No. That's... Yeah, they thought about that. Way Wasn't later. in the novel though that like she's she is hearing a voices of palpatine. It's in the novel. I don't remember that. I don't know what you're on about, bro. It's in the novel. I don't Sorry, try to tell you. I'll take your word for it. Oh my um, God. I love the X-wing battle above above circular base. It's fun. It's really cool. It's fun. Um, I did love... you listen to that interview with Grunberg and the and the Resistance broadcast? No, not yet. I plan. It's on really it. good. He talks about how uh, he was supposed to die in this, and he's like, <laughs> and like they wanted to read, re- wanted him to read some line. He's like, yeah. I'm not reading that. He's like, yeah. <laughs> I did. I did watch that. Did part you, of the yeah, <laughs> it was That's great. Fucking hilarious. He's like, no, I'm not reading that. He's not reading that. Yo, and then JJ, because I think he was shooting with like the second AD or whatever, yeah. and uh, and then he goes to JJ. He's like, he won't read it. And he's like, well, he's not gonna read it. What are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Very impressive interview. We're gonna try to get Yak Face on. Our <laughs> yeah, we're gonna guys stay tuned for Yak Face. He's gonna be on our podcast. Yak Face, if you're listening, I know you are. <laughs> we don't know your name. We're just gonna call you Yak. But face. I do recommend uh, <laughs> listen to that, that yeah that interview with uh, Grunberg. Yeah, it's on my on the resistance good. broadcast. It's, it's on really my to do list. Um, good folks, guys. Over there. This movie snap it ends. Guys, this movie it ends with uh, well R two wakes up. What was that R2? supposed to be? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I, I guys, was, this guys, movie. this movie. R two taking a nap. <laughs> um. It moves, R2 wakes up. We go to uh, Scotland, Ireland. We go to Ireland. And somehow, no porks, only a ton of birds. Yeah. What happened? To, where, where the birds go? I think if they're going to, they, they should do, do, think, do one you, special edition change, and that's put <laughs> porgs in the Force Awakens. Do you think that uh, between episode seven and episode eight, all the porgs ate the other birds on the island? I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened in real life is they filmed episode seven and they went, all right, it's only like a 30 second scene. But then in episode eight, Ryan Johnson was on set going, there's fucking birds everywhere. <laughs> cover this shit up. <laughs> Make them porks. I, I, this is. Just because I'm, I'm not going to think about it next episode. I love the scene of the porg stepping on the lightsaber. Yeah. Oh, it's really fun. I, I like that stuff. I know people are like, "What do you do?" No, I love it. I love it. It's great. I'm like, it's fun. Whatever. It's great. Yeah. I, okay. So Jedi stuff in the it's, finale. You know, if you're going to have R two D two fight Yoda on Dagobah, you can have a porg <laughs> step on a lightsaber. Mine, I mean, come on. Mine, yeah. Mine, I like. Come on, man. Come on. That's that's my favorite fight in Star Wars. R two Yoda. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what? Do you, how how do you like the ending of the film? Um. One hell of a cliffhanger. It's yeah. Honestly, yeah. I was just like, wait, that's it. That's kind of cool, but like. He's not, he didn't say a we word. We gotta wait how long for the next movie? He didn't movie? say a word. And Only two just... years because they rushed them all. And Got them. Uh, <laughs> well, that's about the... That's the same gap as the other films, isn't no, it? Three years. Is it three years? Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, also, I want to talk about this point about... Because it blends into The Last Jedi discourse. And that's, you know, what Ryan Johnson ended up doing with Luke Skywalker. But in The Force Awakens, Han Solo talks about Luke felt so bad that he failed mm-hmm. at this academy and failed Ben, uh, more or less. He doesn't outright say that, but you know, he felt so bad that mm-hmm. and then you that that he he goes away. And then you look yeah. at what the the crawl says, he vanished and Leia's looking for him. And it's like, look, did Ryan Johnson 
tell the story of why Luke was on that island? Yes, if only because it was really set up it's in set The up Force in the Awakens. It's all set yeah. up in this he movie. He felt bad that he Absolutely. failed, yeah. and so he secludes, exile. Yeah. exile secludes himself and on there, this island. And there is a note of sorrow on his face when we see him in that pan shot. Like There's a note of mm-hmm. sorrow and regret and like... Or it's just like, oh, stuff must be really bad if someone's well, found sure, it. But you know? I, but I, I do think, but yeah, there's I do that, think there's it, all that. it's it's set up, it's setting up for the next, you know, it, it's setting up for the next film exactly how it's supposed to. I don't, th- I, I didn't expect Luke to grab the lightsaber and fucking go charge into battle, right? Because based on Star Wars, he's got to train Ray, right? Like, mm-hmm. that's what's right. got to happen next. I didn't see Yoda leave Dagobah to fight the Emperor. Exactly. Yeah, so I mean, I, now, granted, I thought in episode nine we'd see Luke go charge off to fight. Sure, but I was wrong. Um, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that next week, obviously. Yeah. But uh, so like, this this whole situation where you didn't have Luke, Han, and Leia in a scene mm-hmm. all together. Um, look, they probably thought they were going to have time to do that, and, sure, and it just didn't work out that way. And I'm way. okay with it. Uh, yeah, like it's. It's life, man. Like it sucks. Um, I wish we had Carrie for all three films, but that's not the case. You know, I wish. Um, well, but I mean, regardless, Han died. So. Han died. Yeah, Han died, and it's just like also like he comes back. You, you. Yeah, I don't. It's like, <laughs> but here's the other thing. It's just like Luke wasn't there for Han's death. He wasn't there right. to help rescue him or what have you, or mm-hmm. aid him in any way. And people, I don't remember people being upset about that. Like, why? How come Luke wasn't there? Mm-hmm. That's not a very Luke thing to do. No. And so when you get into Rise people or uh, Last Jedi, it he, Ryan Johnson kind of has to more or less explain why that was the case, and we we, we end up finding that out, and we'll talk about that a lot more at length uh, next week. But um, so when I look at the discourse towards Ryan Johnson I'm like you guys don't want to look at what right. Ryan, what JJ right. set up in the first movie like you, you can't really have you can't both, have both, you can't ways. Have both ways so yeah. and I know not a lot of people are like that but and at the time though I feel, feel like the discourse there was yeah was just insane I think it still gotten, is but it's I just, think it's I can't wait till we get to nine because I think there's a lot of a lot of it all comes to a head in nine mm-hmm. Uh, with the opinions on the Last Jedi and the opinions on Force Awakens, it all comes to a head in nine. And and you know, even look, I'm I'm I've got my own uh, hangups with the the sequel trilogy as a whole. Sure. Overall, I like it. You know, overall, I'm happy with it. Um, do I wish a few things were different or a few things were added in or taken out? Yeah, sure. But you know. I think about that about the the, the, the prequel trilogy. I think about I think, that. I think about, you know. the, about that about the prequels. You know what? If I really wanted to be critical about it, there's probably stuff in the original trilogy I would sure, change. Sure. You know. Um, well, more wrath stars, more <laughs> casinos. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, more talking less Babu yeah. Frick. Oh boy. Oh fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Babu Frick's untouchable. A hey, hey. Babu. Hey. All right, uh, um, guys. Look. Uh, hit a subscribe, hit a like, hit a comment. Tell us what was your opinion on Force Awakens when it came out, and how has that changed? That's what I want to see in the comments. Um, I re- I'm very curious, right? Like because I feel like my feelings on this movie have evolved. Yeah. Um, I feel like my feelings on all of the sequel trilogy have evolved. Um, and uh, you know, tell your friends. Hey, uh, today I went to the store, and I told um. The guy working the store about my Star Wars podcast, mostly because he was watching Clone Wars in the store. Oh, really? But oh, well, he was watching Bad or sorry, Bad Batch, not Hell Clone yeah. Wars. Um, but uh, you know, uh, fucking tell your friends, send them, send them over our way. Um, listen to us ramble for an hour and a half about a movie that came out seven years ago. Yeah, yeah wow. We, we want to get really famous. We want to get. Really <laughs> we want to get really famous, and we rely on we, you to make that happen. We know there's a so. lot of money in Star Wars podcasting. <laughs> it's just waiting to be grabbed. <laughs> But uh, guys, if you missed it, uh, go ahead and check out whether or not you're watching Bad Batch. Check out our Bad Batch reviews because the second half of all those reviews is a nice Q and A open discussion. Mm-hmm. We talk about a lot of cool things, a lot of fun, funny things on there. Um, and then uh, we're also going to talk about some news stuff with that too. Uh, this last week, we just talked a little bit about Fallen Order uh, or uh, Jedi Survivor, yeah. I should say, the gameplay trailer that came out. Um, and we got some good questions from the, from the fans, <laughs> and I knocked the headphone out of my ear. God and damn it. 
I, I will say one last thing about The Force Awakens. I absolutely love just the build up to it. Yeah. And the merchandising and everything. Oh, merchandising, I was I was at the Disney store in the mall. Hell yeah. For many, many times. I had I still have my Kylo Ren lightsaber that I bought there. And I unfortunately no longer have my Kylo Ren voice changing helmet. Otherwise I would have worn it today. Damn, 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 damn. Very sad. All right. Well, well that's gonna wrap it up here for this edition of Scoundrels Inc. Tune in next time or for our last Jedi talk and if, whenever you're watching this, listen to all our Skywalker Saga series episodes yeah. uh, on this channel or on our podcast feed. And uh, guys, um, may the yeah. may, may the farce be with you. Yes, and, and and remember, if you have anything bad to say about us, something far worse has happened to you. <laughs> Scoundrel. Scoundrel. I like the sound of that. <laughs>